Good morning. I suppose I probably knew there wasn't a show, but just don't remember, right? <laughs> uh, excuse me. There we go. Good morning, everybody. So now they're just Tuesday to Thursday, I guess. Three days a week. All right. I guess I should probably remind myself of that somehow so I'll know from now on that I need to do a Monday show. I forgot all about it. I don't know. I guess we probably all talked about it at one time. But <clears throat> some things I don't remember because there's too much crap for me to remember anyway. <laughs> well, that's interesting. I can do this. If I come up here, it's Monday. We're not going to be loud. We're going to be nice and mellow this morning, okay? So if you come up and you're loud, I'm going to mute you for eternity because it's Monday. We don't do anything loud on Monday. Right? Right. <sighs> Okay, there we go, everybody. <clears throat> now we have a show. Good morning, everyone. This is the Bug Man. Jody, there ain't nothing wrong with that. I couldn't lift it. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm so fat and out of shape right now. I wouldn't have been able to lift that fish by myself. There's no doubt in my mind. Good morning, J&J. Uh, but so don't don't beat yourself up or nothing, man. I wouldn't have been able to. I know me. Not right now, I wouldn't. I'm so, so fat and weak right now. It's, I've never been this bad in all my life. Like I said, I, I'd be afraid. I would be afraid to go dirt bike riding right now, let alone the heck with racing. I'd be afraid to go riding right now. I'm afraid I'd have a heart attack. Um, and, and that's not a joke. That's that's being honest. I mean, heck, I sweat so bad in the summertime doing nothing. But, I mean, I've always been like that. I always sweat a lot. But since I put all this weight on, it's twice as bad. I know that. I don't even know what the date is today. Let's see. The 18th. Okay. <coughs> I wake up with my allergies starting already this, this year. It's early, but the trees are budding. I actually mowed some grass Saturday, I think it was. Okay, Russick, I forgot all about it. No worries, man. 2X and then blue. If they don't have blue, then I don't really care. Whatever color they want to send is fine. <laughs> I'm back. What do you mean? I got my clothes on. You're talking about James. <clears throat> Good morning, Stonefly. How are you, buddy? 
Man, my nose is just plugged up today. I was going to go fishing yesterday, but it got cold. Uh, I let little guy out. This, I let little guy out this morning, and there were snow flurries. I mean, not much, but like little flakes of snow falling. Big flakes, but a few of them. I guess I should say. I don't know. It's Monday. It was snowing. Let's put it that way. How'd you do it, Stonefly? No kidding. What are you doing to lose it, buddy? But God knows I need to. Carnivore diet. Never heard of it. So am I assuming all you eat is meat? I'm okay with that. Meat, eggs, and cheese. Can I drink milk? Because if I can't drink milk, I can't do it. Yeah, we use real butter here, too. Hmm. Yeah, see, I gotta have at least one glass of milk a day. I mean, that's been my whole life. But all them years racing dirt bikes, I never broke a bone. I fractured one, but it didn't break. <laughs> so I, I'm a strong believer in drinking milk. Are there any electrolytes in Mountain Dew? No, I'm kidding. I don't know. <laughs> so basically, I would have to give up Mountain Dew. Not giving up at least one Red Bull in the morning. That can't happen. Got to have it. And then I could go the rest of the day drinking water and Gatorade. Does it have to be does it have to be red meat or can I eat like fish and chicken and stuff like that turkey Yeah, see, I can't go walking. I could ride an incumbent bike or something like that. You know what I mean? I can't walk because of my knee. I can walk, you know, through Walmart. And that's about it as far as walking distance goes. I uh, forgot what I was thinking now. <laughs> Exactly, yeah, an elliptical bicycle or even a, a rowing machine. I had a rowing machine. I wish I hadn't got rid of it now. Because that was the perfect exercise machine, in my opinion. Because if I'm riding a bike, I don't get anything from my upper body. You know what I mean? But with the rowing machine, it's, it's legs and upper body. Harvey's has this peach lemonade. I will may have. I may have to check that out, Jody. Was it about seven dollars a, a glass? Though everything at Harvey's is expensive. Jody caught a hog this weekend. 
Yes, she did. Up, I'm glad the little guy woke me up at 4.30 to go to the bathroom. Do you still fight? Like, yeah, my uh, my right knee's okay. It's been replaced, but my left one it's it's trashed. It's been trashed. It needs replaced. I just can't do it right now. Yeah, if you ain't seen it, Stonefly, go to uh, the Tennessee River Live they had this weekend and <clears throat> scroll through and look for it. It's, it's, it was a heck of a fight. <laughs> yeah, Jay and Jay, I would love to walk. Heck, I would love to run. We ran every day in the army. <clears throat> yeah, I had my right one done. God, I don't even know how long ago, about 10 years ago, maybe. I don't know. Something like that. And uh, it definitely was, was well past time to have it done. Oh, yeah, no doubt in my mind, Jody. I know, heck, I caught it wasn't very big at all with, with j Dog the last time. And because of the current, it makes it feel three times bigger. I had no idea, you know, he's like, this is a big one, and I'm like, I have no idea, I know it's hard to reel in, that's all I know. <laughs> Morning, Nate. Stonefly, I don't remember how far in it was. Jody can probably tell you what minute to start at. <clears throat> I have to give a little guy a special treat today for waking me up. What's everybody doing today? Anything worth talking about? Me, I'm trying to think what I got going on today. I have no idea. Oh, that's cool. Okay, 55 minutes in, Jody started killing her. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Place Country Girl. I guess not, hon. I guess that they're only doing it Tuesday to Thursday now. Uh, I assume I knew this, but it's me after all. You know I don't remember nothing if it, I ain't written it down. And I'll bet you money it's written down in my notes down there somewhere, buried underneath a stack of bills. Yeah, she did, didn't she, Nate? She nailed it. It was a great fight, too. And I was getting so mad because I kept switching back and forth. I'm like, come on, man. How can you show the fight of the year if it's part of that if you keep cutting it up by switching back and forth? Is it done? I know there was a... Uh, 
snowflakes when I let little guy out. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. I haven't watched the news this morning, so I have no idea what's going to happen. But if it does snow, it just covers the ground and be gone this afternoon if the sun comes out. So now I need to remember that I got Friday and Monday. I'm because you know now that I think about it, I remember him asking me. Uh If I wanted to to do Monday, and I remember saying that I would. <laughs> it looks nice and sharp. Jody's hook commercial. <coughs> I died laughing when you done the hook commercial with the fist <laughs> during the thing. <laughs> I'm like Jody's going corporate. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with Jody. I just thought it was funny. Really, Don? How old are you going to be, brother? 40? 
Oh, man. I think I dozed off. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Goodness. What what would you say about the skiff? Really? They're going to let you try it for a weekend? No, that's cool. Uh, I still, I, can you sleep on it? That's my concern. If you can't sleep on it, then I don't know if I'm into it or not. <laughs> I'm on something coming. Shh. Mellow. There you go. Nice and low and quiet. I like it. You're good. You're still, you're kind of breaking up a little bit though, brother. Am I still breaking up? No, you're good now. <laughs> I got, it's me. I got my volume all the way up. I was watching something, I guess. I was trying to whisper for you, buddy. You're all right. It's, I'm trying. I actually fell asleep, I think. I know you got cold there a little bit. Good morning, Uncle Lou. How you feeling, buddy? Is the pain getting any better? Hi, John. I'm glad a little guy woke me up, or I'd still be sleeping. I was debating whether or not to go live this morning, and uh, because I knew he wouldn't be live, the uh, Hogley show wouldn't be live till Tuesday. Yeah, I didn't even, I'm sure we all talked about it, but I just don't remember. You know me, I'm an airhead, and little guy got me up, and uh, I was gonna go back to bed and i was going to uh just kick the show on and let it run while i was in bed either falling asleep or laying there listen and uh, i couldn't find a show and it's like hmm so that's when i decided to get up and come in here and see what was going on and he said he make it no no chris you want to talk about cool, cool as a cucumber this guy right here is he, he come in saturday on fish nation put a number in for a shirt he left, went to the bathroom, come back, didn't even know he won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Miss Plus Country Girl, I got you beat on airhead status. I guarantee I do. Oh, uh, Chris, no problem, man. I enjoy doing it. I just, but like I said, I forgot. I didn't even, you know. Like, wait a minute, is there a show? Or no show today? Because, I mean, Yeah, I just done my shoulder exercises, and every time I do, my shoulder feels a lot better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, any movement at all makes it feel better, that. Yo, oh, yeah. He, he told me just do it once a day or yeah. twice a day, morning and before I go to bed. Yeah. And uh, Which I'm still sleeping in a recliner because I can't lay in the bed because when I do, it hurts. Yeah. Well, and but, the uh, worst part is once you lay down, you can't, it's so hard to get up. A buddy of mine put one of them things like you can lift yourself up with above his bed when he had his done. Oh, Nate? No, actually, it don't stiffen up. It's, it's just stiff and hurts all the time. No kid. Where'd you go, Uncle Lou? I seen you in here. You didn't answer my question. How you feeling this morning? What's our pain level? On a one to ten, Uncle Lou, what is our pain level this morning? <clears throat> Doctor Bugs Chris, in the house. I got all the medicine that you need to make it quit hurt. <laughs> Chris, if it's bone or bone, you can go get a shot in a joint, and then it's separated for a certain amount of time. I um, mean, that's just a temporary fix. Surgery's the only thing's gonna fix bone on bone. Yeah, and depending on how degraded the socket is, you may get more than that even. Yeah, mine, not only did I tear the two tendons in two that goes up to my neck and almost ripped my rotor cuff in two, mm. I had giant bone spurs that was curled in my joints. And, oh. uh, 
That yeah. didn't bother me because all that did was pop, pop, pop. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. But uh, now my joint, <clears throat> I, what movement I can get in my arm now, and the joint feels good. I mean, it's smooth. Yeah. Let's just pray Dad sleeps in a little bit this morning. Yeah, the surgery part, I, uh, I mean, the mind got to where it was disrupting my sleep every night. That's when I went to the doctor for my first shoulder surgery. Yeah. It was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. Because it always seems to be the shoulder that you sleep on is the one you hurt first. Yeah. Oh, I normally sleep on my back because I've had two back surgeries and my lower spine's fused. Oh, yeah. So I can't lay on my side because your spine will, will start dipping like this. Yeah. It's too yeah. painful. And if I lay on my belly, my back starts doing this. Yeah. And it's too painful. So I have to lay flat on my back. And, uh, and with me trying to lay in the bed right now, my shoulders relax and they go flat. And when it goes flat, it pulls on that rotor cuff. Mm, yep. Oh my God. I'm trying to get out of the bed and hold my arm at the same time. I'm like, <laughs> but it, it's getting better. It's I funny think, you uh, said that, Nate. My feet have been hurting and, uh, I actually soaked them in hot, so, hot salt water the other morning. I'm having trouble with my feet swelling up and then swelling up to my knees. And I can't figure out why I was doing that. Uh, I might have to go to the doctor over that because sometimes it's the calf, the front, the front of your leg air, front of your calf, you can touch that and it's sore. Mm. But I can't figure out why my feet and ankles are swelling. I guess it's too much of this. Fat jelly rolls hanging off. <laughs> Too much That's on. my problem right there. That's exactly what my problem is. Yeah, Chris M, man, all the stuff we done when we were younger. So, so hard on our body now that we're older. I yeah. humped mud for a while for some bricklayers. And uh, that's a low man on the totem pole job right there. <laughs> God, I hated it. <laughs> I did mine. Uh, I had a firewood business cutting firewood for people, and I did mine by uh, swinging an axe before I got my wood splitter and then picking up them big logs, trying to roll them. Yeah. Blocks and stuff. And I barely tore the rotor cuff, and I, I said, ah, I ain't going to doctor for that. Then the bone spurs hurting, and they'd done the shots. They said, Well, we didn't do surgery. And I, nah. You yeah. Know, I started nah, that's all right. And 10 to 14 years go by, and I decided to do this building out here, and the shingles on my shoulder ripped my. Uh, my muscle tore and gave away. And when it did that, it ripped the two tendons. Mm. Mm. Two. Yeah. I, I do something now. All right, Mr. Uncle Lou, what is your hey, pain man. level this morning? Hey, look at there. Welcome in, Extreme Trout. Hi, right, Extreme Trout. So, I don't so, think I know you, but let's see if we. I don't know if I can do that on here. Nope. I have to do it on my phone. Got to do that stuff too. Yeah. Ain't doing it anymore. <laughs> this shoulder right here will not lift up any heavy strenuous weights anymore. <laughs> no, no. And then after you get a picture, like those days are over, man. You know, I had some young dude ask me to help him lift something or whatever a while back. And I was like, dude, do you see me? I'm fat and every joint of my body's had a knife in it. Both shoulders and both knees. He said, Uncle Lou said, do what, buggy? I said, Uncle Lou, what is your pain level on a 1 to 10 this morning? I'm diagnosing you today. Dr. Bugs in the house. Yeah, you're lucky, Nate. I just happen to... My genetics and knees are bad. My dad's knees are bad. Uh, mom's knees are bad. So I think it was genetic 7. No kidding. Okay, Uncle Lou, I suggest we uh, see, put some ice on it and go back to sleep. And if that doesn't work, then put more ice on it and take something to help you sleep. Hey, yeah. good morning, Purpose Classics. How are you, buddy? Good morning. 
a brand new bow and shop does are probably the questions right now. Yeah. <laughs> they started out with three small incisions, then stopped and opened it up. They cut the collarbone, and there's a gap the size of a roller cock. Jeez, Tony. Yeah, that's what they done to my right one, Joe. They started out with the three uh, oh, orthoscopic, and they had to stop and cut me open, too. I got five. Five holes right here in one small cut across my shoulder. Yeah. I didn't know it till I got out of the shower. I knew it was bandaged up and stuff, and they took the stitches out. I got a shower, I was drying off, and I was looking at it in the mirror, and I could see the all five of them around in that one yeah. cut right there. And I'm like, so he's just going fishing this weekend, but yeah, but all right, Joe. Is, Good, uh, buddy. Uh, the rotor cuff here, uh, all the years of lifting weights and in the gym and stuff like that, it, uh, you know, expanded my rotor cuff, made it bigger. And they said that it was about that much holding on out of all of it. They said it was yeah. over four inch rip. And I'm like, they said I was lucky I could even, I didn't lose the, the permanent loss of my arm. Yeah, no doubt. Dr. Buckster, until some desk jockey stopped thinking they are smarter than a doctor and I get some pads in ahead of this pain for a few days, it'll hurt for a while. You know, Uncle Lou, I keep trying to explain that concept to Dad. He said, why well, don't hurt right now? I said, I know you don't, Pop. I said, but if you take a couple pain pills every five or six hours, you stay ahead of it that way. If it does start hurting, you got a little bit in your system to, to counteract it. Yeah. How long ago did you have yours done, Jody? Mine was February 14th. I'm a little over a month out. And the the therapist told me, he goes, when did you have your surgery? The 14th of February? And I said, yeah. And he goes, he goes, you shouldn't be this far along in, in your arm movement like that. In translation, you shouldn't be moving that arm. <laughs> yeah, and <coughs> extreme trout. I don't have Instagram. Uh, yeah, I don't have an Instagram. I don't know how to get on Instagram. <laughs> At first, you Instagram, sure it wasn't me, child. I got an Instagram, but it. I don't think I got a link on here or nothing. Hey, if I got an Instagram account out there, somebody made it up. I don't. <laughs> That's the ultimate sign of flattery. Uh, Chris said, fresh cuts, Rusty. <laughs> yep. Oh, goodness. What, what, my most, probably four years ago, they took some of the shoulder too because arthritis had eaten it up. Oh, my goodness. Well, you don't show no signs that when you're fishing, but I can imagine when you grab it on that pole, it's, it shows. <laughs> That's what happened to me last time I went out fishing. Had a flathead hit the far outside left pole and it went down. I reached over my left, not thinking, and tried to yank oh. that pole out with one arm. And when I got that pole, pole, pole out of there, it just tore that muscle even worse. And I dropped my, my rod. I almost lost it in the water. If I didn't step on it, I would have lost it. Huh. <laughs> yeah, don't don't go to that one, Trout. That I don't have an Instagram. <laughs> How long after the surgery does the pain last? Oh, months. <laughs> you talking uh, rustic or Uncle Lou? <laughs> Either way, they both hurt for months. Yeah. <laughs> Mine, like right now, mine's good. It's not no pain. I done my exercises yeah. and stretched a little bit, so it's not drawn up. Uh, my biggest thing is that when it tries to draw back up, the picture of the muscle of uh, doing the wave and then drawing like this right here, and it makes you like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
I know, Jody. I can imagine. Yeah. But uh, like after surgery, you don't feel a thing. They put that nerve block in there. My only advice to you is that don't sleep in the bed after your surgery, even though you got the nerve block and you're feeling good. Because yeah. that nerve block takes out. You got two sets of lungs. You got, you got, you got lung on both sides. It takes out your lung on the side of the surgery you have on. So you got breathing out of one lung because it numbs that one. And you, you're going to want to sit in the chair. Bugman told me that a long time ago. <laughs> Oh man. man told me what time they went to bed. I was at the dollar store at five to ten last night grabbing milk as I spaced it during the day. Yeah. Get a pop above your head. Well, I can sit here and do this. Now I can raise my arm up right here. That's that's as far as I that's far as I can. But before that, I couldn't even get my arm to move like that right here. I couldn't even get it to move. So, but yeah, Bugman told me before I had my surgery, better get you a good recliner. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. It's like they got me in uh, therapy now starting this week, three days a week. Oh, yeah. But I'm going to have to cancel Tuesday therapy because Wednesday therapy because I'm meeting Roger over at uh, Kentucky Down uh, Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Good morning, Dale. Morning, Dale. Yeah, me and Dominic's going to go over there. We're going to, since Roger's got to drive five and a half hours to get there, we're going to fill his coolers up and skip that point. So I'm going to try to send him back with two or three hundred skipjack and, and then uh then I gotta catch me three or four hundred so and to be a woman I can very strong I can lift a lot. <laughs> Jody remember when we met CatCon <laughs> and I leaned down to take a picture with you. <laughs> that was awesome. <clears throat> Dude. Oh, goodness. Okay, wake up, bud. Don't see no more snowflakes. You did it to yourself, shoulders. You did it to you did it to yourself, shoulders. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, I did mine racing dirt bikes. Even with rock guard and shoulder pads on, I still trashed them. Yeah, but when you race in the woods and the trail's real narrow, you know, you're trying to cut as close to the trees as you can in the corners. And uh, sometimes you get a little closer than you should. Thanks, Jody. Jody's authentic, too. She's, <laughs> she's, a, she's a character on camera. Yeah. She's a character off camera. She's, she tells yep. like it. <laughs> yep. She's like me. She says it, it just comes out. <laughs> yeah, no filter. Rustic, what are you using for the skips? You mean, what am I catching the skipjacks on? Yeah. Hey, Captain Morgan. Good morning. This one. You can't. Arr, Captain Morgan. Talk like a pirate day. I use, well, this is supposed to be a red and white jig, but it's very well used and worn. You see the tails bit off of it, but that's normally what I use. That, or I started using these uh, uh, redhead white feathers or all white feather jigs. Like that right there. These here are from Bowtie Jigs. Man, them things work awesome. That's the only two colors I use. Every now and then, I might put a blue and white crappie jig on there. But I mainly use red and white crappie jigs or them white feather ones. And, and the way I got them tied on my line, and man, I'll sit there and Dominic tell you, I'll sit there and throw it out. And I'll barely move it. And I'll feel one hit. 
And I start pulling on it, and then all of a sudden another one hit. And I said, oh, come on, load up, load up. The next thing you know, you feel another one hit, another one hit. They say, no, I've got five on the line. They're easy to catch. Anybody can go catch them. But if you want to catch them like me, I, I can tell you how to do it. Because I catch them six, five, four at a time, three at a time. Uh, Luke Knox. Uh, let's see. My son messed with my rods. So I don't like they're going to get tangled. Show you here. Yeah, he messed with these just last night. Looking at them, and put them beside each other and tangle them all up. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, let's get that up out of there. I don't see if you can oh, get over. You see that or not? I got, a, got them hanging down about that. I'll put one hanging down here from a knot. Uh, I'm going to say about an inch and a half. And then my next one, I'll go about two inches. Then my next one, I'll go about an inch and a half then two inch. And that way it makes it look like one's higher than the other. Hey, good morning, Dave B. All right, Dave. How are you, buddy? Well, what I do is I pull out about eight foot of line off the end of the rod. And I'll put my, my jig on. And I'll run up, tip the pole, and I'll come down, put the two lines of my fingers, grab the jig, go around these two fingers right here. And then I'll make a loop, and I'll go through that loop three times, and I'll pinch it. And then I'll move down about 10, 11 inches, and I'll do it there, too. Or D, but one thing people need to learn, if you don't catch more skipjack, you can't have your knots and your jigs at the same depth, same length. You want one about two inch, then one about inch and a half, one about two inch, one about inch and a half. Because, you know, fish swim different. And they're at different, even though they're swimming together, they're not all straight lines. They're kind of jagged. <coughs> Good morning, D. How are you today? It's really nice to see you. Yeah, I want to go skip jack fishing. Oh, I wish you'd come down too, buddy, because you have a yeah. I think it'd be fun. After you catch about 30, 40 of them, you'll sit down and shoot the breeze for an hour because you're showing oh, me like yeah. That. Yep, no doubt. <laughs> That's what I I just think it's cool when you're fishing with a jig and you feel the hit. That's the best part about it. Uh, Joe, you talk about putting your jigs on the line in a row at different lengths. Now, you don't want to go over two inch. Definitely don't want to go two inch. Because if you do that, then your jig will wrap around your main line and it'll just be wrapped all the time. Oh, yeah. And I, I put mine a, a 30 second, a 30 second, a 30 second, a 30 second, then a 16th, and then I'll put eighth on the, on the bottom jig. So when you throw them out there, it just lays down. Boom. Yeah, fishing from the bank, yeah. You can catch more from the boat, but up in Kentucky, I don't want to fight that that power of that water coming out of that dam <laughs> with the boat. If you're in a boat, you can put out five or six rods and just keep constantly pulling them in. <laughs> but you have to fight that that heavy current coming out of that turbine. I'm like, I'm not doing all that. Just because I can sit there on the bank and just load them up on on there. And my advice is, if you're gonna fish for skipjack, put your 20 pound test line on there because when you catch three or four of them dudes and a three pounds piece, oh, you talk about a heavy pull, especially in hard current. Yeah, the current that, adds five pounds to the fish. Oh yeah, I use that trilene. Yeah, green. I just I just loaded my uh, spinning reel with that last night, actually. Yep, because uh, I used the green because the green green and red Cajun line twenty pound disappears in the water. If you yep. use uh, that clear mono, that clear mono looks white, 
and I've noticed that over the years that compared to the mono, I tried it one day. I put that on one rod, I put the red on one rod, and I put the, that mono, the clear mono on the other, and they would come up that clear mono, see that jig, and they also have to see that line and turn from it. And there was less took up compared to that green or that red. Yeah, Don, I'd like to do that too. Maybe we'll get together sometime since you'd have to pass right by here to go over there. Maybe we'll get together and do that one time. Yep, that's true. Oh, yeah, you take, you take, uh, I'm going to say just for example, three, two, three pound fish at one time on the line. And like Joe said, when you go to pick it up, it stretch that line, but that line's got good memory. But the problem is, is that they're all sitting there flopping like it's right here. And when you're trying to pull three or four of them through the water, two or three pounders, they're all going different directions. <laughs> so you want to make sure you get that 20 pound test line. I'm, Cause I've learned 17 pound won't cut. <laughs> On a JBT. morning jbt how are you today buddy it's monday so you don't want to know how it's going <laughs> it's going monday and i'm still trying to wake up because i wasn't even i mean i didn't even know i was doing a show today <laughs> would you it ain't a problem it's not like i prepped to do a show you know what i mean we just kind of wing it well, I caught my fish one at a time. Yeah, but when you're in a bait business like I am, you need to pull them in quickly and a lot at one time. So like I said, over there, you're supposed to actually use a big pole net or, or a net to catch them in, uh, cast net. You're legally not supposed to be catching them and keeping them on rod and reel. So when the game warden walks up and says, what are you going to do with all them? You have to tell them you're going to eat them. <laughs> Don't tell them you're using it for fish bait. Because they don't, they frown on that. I learned that over there. Because I had one, that game, one of the young guys, cool guys. He said, the next one comes up, tell them you're going to eat them because you're not supposed to catch them on rotten reel. He said, we just don't pay attention to it. We don't care about the if you go over the amount. I don't think we have skipjack. <clears throat> I think if there's any dams around and the water currents going, especially off the main rivers, uh, you'll have skipjack around the dams. Because uh, they're normally in saltwater fish, and they they always skipjack always came into fresh water to, to spawn and go back out. But since man's built dams, they got trapped behind there and they can't get out. So they just stay and spawn there. A lot of people said, well, I don't want to keep bulk and keep bunch. Because it might fish out that had fishery. Now, you ain't never going to fish out skipjack. Them jump breed. The one thing that's hurt skipjack is uh, the Asian carp come in, eat all the algae out. When they eat all the algae out, a lot of your shad die because there's not enough algae in the water for them to feed on and uh, skipjack feed on the shed. So like everybody says, if Asian carp will bite your hook, now you snag him in the mouth if he bit your hook. Because Asian carp strictly feed on an algae. That's why when you see them in the water, they're constantly going through the water like that. They're sucking that in, getting all the algae, constantly feeding. Asian 
Asian carp do not bite worms. They don't buy skipjack. They don't bite your jigs. If you caught one in the mouth, it's because you pulled it through there and you hung him in the mouth. Mm. Okay, another red bull. I should have went fishing Saturday. It was too cold yesterday to go. Well, too cold for me anyway, and the wind was horrible. Yeah, it's 35 here yeah. right now. I was going to go skip jack fishing today, but I'm not tolerating that cold. I'll wait till Wednesday. It's supposed to be like 63 degrees. Yeah, degrees. yeah I'm with you. I'm over, I, nothing is so important that I got to do it in the cold. No, I mean, I'm going out there getting the sniffles and getting the cold. And... Yeah, misplaced country girl, we don't have skip jacks in Ohio, I don't think. I forget what it is that shad. Yeah, you got shad, a lot of shad. Uh, Uncle Lou, I was letting little guy out, and there was little snowflakes falling. I'm like, no way. I yeah, got. I, go ahead, buddy. Yeah, so I got a clean house today, man. A lot. Every good shadow I ever caught was almost I snagged them when I was real in. <laughs> huh. Um well, I was getting my Uncle Lou rod ready for this weekend. Cause hmm. Eric done let his mouth overload his butt. So I'm gonna get him this weekend. I ain't never talked smack to nobody about catfishing, but he called me out, so I gotta get him. I don't what like to lose. I ain't gonna lie. I hate losing. That's why I don't compete until I know I'm ready. You won't put it to him, huh? No, uh, I'm gonna try. I don't know if it'll happen or not, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. I'll sit out there and fish from 6 a.m. to midnight if I have to. <laughs> Say he didn't put no time limit on it. <coughs> yeah, I got a weather deal last night telling me that a winter freeze warning. For the next couple days. Yep. Oh, I bet you did. It's supposed to get below freezing here. I think today or tomorrow. Tomorrow today. Yeah, Miss Place Country I, Girl. What's your first name? I know I've been told it, but I always forget. Denise. Denise. Okay. Yeah, I can remember that. That's a friend of mine's exes. There's my man, Eric. Morning, sunshine. Hey. Excuse me, it was not me that called you out. Oh, it was your brother. I'm sorry. I better turn this down. I knew he would go uh, be out. <laughs> morning. You're right, Eric. My bad. It was your brother, wasn't it? Hey, I'm old, man. I'm going to claim dementia. Well, we had a, a boat accident at our boat ramp this weekend. You did? Two guys, two guys flipped their boat. Oh, you're kidding me. Sunday. No, I'm not kidding. How you flip your boat at the boat ramp? Well, when you got, what, I think it was 35 mile an hour wind gust. Oh, yeah. Okay, you're out yeah. there on the water in your boat like an idiot. Yep. Yep. Use some common sense. And I mean, well, I hate yeah. to say it, but the last time somebody did that, they died. Yeah. yeah, when you're when you got that one, two, four, a, that lake is not a joke, even though it's a 9.9 .9 lake, it's not a joke. When the you know, people don't, down. Yeah, people don't understand a small reservoir can get three foot waves with the right wind. That the reservoir ain't small, <laughs> or the, the little one by me where I carp fish at, that lake ain't very big, and I've seen three foot waves on it from the wind. You know, if you get the exact right direction, and yeah, man, and I'm like you, if that wind's blowing that hard, you probably didn't have no business being out there. I hate to see them both. Maybe I'd go there and fish for gear tomorrow. <laughs> Tie on about four treble hooks and cast over where they were and start reeling in and see what you snag. Yeah. Did yeah, they 
Who's the boat? Or, they get the boat out, did they finally? I think they did. They most most of the time when they do have an accident out there, they they pull the boat out. You know, because that they make that reservoir to the city of Columbus's water, so they try to keep it as clean as possible. Yep. Yeah, I didn't, even think, thing about, is, I didn't even think about the. I didn't even think about the gas and oil part of it. <laughs> you guys didn't have the boat out, did you, or did you? No, I, I didn't go this weekend. I feel like crap Saturday. Did you fish? No, I ain't fished at all this weekend. Me neither. I missed the day. Saturday was the day, but I had to get a little spot in my yard mode about the size of an average backyard or whatever because the grass was just getting out of control. The rest of it is okay. and Well, I couldn't have mowed the rest of it anyway because you walk through it and it squishes. <laughs> I had to laugh. I put mine on... I forget which pole it was. It might be this Uncle Lou pole with the spinning reel. I switched it back to the spinning reel. And I thought, man, I'm going to see how far I can cast this. <laughs> I cast it out towards the pond, man, and a, a four-ounce sinker. Not thinking. I, was, I figured I'd cast out there and reel it in. It plugged four inches deep in the ground. <laughs> I'm kind of tugged with it and thought, that ain't coming back. So I laid the bowl down and went out there or reeled it in as i went to it and that you couldn't even see the sinker it was down in that mud so far <laughs> huh. orndale <laughs> yeah i learned a long time ago if i plan on going to the lake to go fishing out the boat and i walk outside and that wind's blowing i put my boat back up yep I know Thanks. that wind's white cap, and I like now. Nah, I ain't doing all this, especially if you have a pontoon. Man, they're bad in the wind. Well, what broke me it was, was I had a 16 boat. Any boat, if it's if the winds are over 15 mile an hour, I, I can just keep fishing on the bank. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, there's no way you need to be unless you got a big boat that you're just going to pull into a protected slip somewhere. Yeah, what broke me was I had a 16 foot John boat with a uh nine and a half horse johnson on the back and i took it out across there and then waves were coming over in the boat and i turned around and went back i said i like yep. something yeah i get this <laughs> remember that duck boat thing or whatever had all the people on it that went under because of the waves yeah up there at branson yeah i never figure out why that guy didn't turn that boat around and just beach it somewhere you know what i mean let me tell you why yeah, I there's money, money, money. I don't care. I would listen to people and say, Hey guys, listen, this is pretty serious. I'm gonna turn this boat and we're gonna run it as fast as we can up on this shore. When we hit that shore, I want you to start filing off in front of this boat and jumping on that shore. You know, I mean, there comes a point you when, realize that that it's out of control, you know what I mean? Yeah, see what they do is they come down by the branches bell on that boat ramp and they go down and hit that water fast. And with the winds blowing almost 30 mile an hour that day, it was white capping like two foot waves. Oh, so sure. Water came into that boat right then. Yeah. And then by the time he turned around and tried to get back, the wind unbloated way down so they couldn't. There was no <laughs> coming back from that. Well, that's what I mean. I would have beached it the first, the first chance I got. I'd have run that up on the beach, man. That boat can't sink if it's on the on the on, up on the beach. Yeah. Well, they. They basically shut down. They went bankrupt and they had to shut down. Oh, now a new, sure. company, a new company's yeah. come in and bought some new ones and they reopened up. And if that wind's blowing a certain amount of mile per hour to make a white cap, they won't run that day. Yep. Yeah. I just I always thought that. I mean, I've been, you know, boating on the reservoir where it got a little out of hand and I either looked for a cove to run into real quick or just got it up on the beach as far as I could because, you know, you realize that I'm not going to be able to boat against these waves. We ain't never had a big boat. It's always been something small. So, I mean, you know your limit. And if you can get it up on where it's not, it's not on plane, but it's up with the front end up as high as you can. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they got, it, 
Well, they, they, won't out. They, they, won't what you're doing. they won't go out. Yep, I'm like you. It was a money for sure, but I'd have run that yep. boat up on the beach. I don't care if it was rock, sand. It don't matter. I'm beaching that bad boy as hard as I can. We'll worry about getting it off the beach after everyone's safe. Uh, yep. You know, we go dancing the all the time. About it, more people keep making dumb boating accidents up there in Hoover. It's going to make it more more restrictions on you know, there's, the heck they're doing up there. There's some states require you to take classes and stuff for you. Yep. The age, I can't remember what age it is. I remember, I, yeah, I remember, I remember I lived up in Wisconsin. Heck, they had a hunting class, and it was either junior high or high school, one or two. Yeah, here for hunting, they make you take a class from a certain year. I think it's 69 down. Anybody born after that has to. Uh, take class and now they got it to where at a certain age if you're going to operate a pontoon or a boat you got to have uh what they call a, a marine license or something yeah yep. i can't remember what what year it is if i think it, i can't remember it's a 90, 90 or 85 and somewhere in there if you were born before then you don't have to have a boating license and if after that you have to you got to take your boating the three-hour course that you have to pay for. Yeah. I remember when they in, implemented the motorcycle license in the state of Indiana. If you already owned a motorcycle that was registered, you got grandfathered in. And because my brother got grandfathered in, I had to take the a bay class and stuff to get mine. And that's a tough obstacle course you got to ride to pass up. I mean, I've ridden my whole life, and the thing was, you can't go there on a small motorcycle because if you do, then you only get an endorsement for X amount of CCs and down, you know. So I took the thousand CC bike that day, and I almost dropped it one time. Where the guy even he said nobody fails. He said anybody that comes here and spends a Saturday doing it, they get. You know, they get past eventually, even if they got to ride the course two or three times to make it. Yeah, I know here, anything under 50 cc's and under, you don't have to have a bike license. Yeah. A little see. neighbor kid lived across the road from me in Noblesville. He had a scooter, you know, them little scooters you see running around everywhere. Yeah. Boy, he had this thing hopped up, dude. You ought to heard it. It sounded like a dirt bike, man. And he said, you had to run about 55 or 60 mile an hour. <laughs> he said, oh, yeah. it, so. you know, catfish and fever outdoors, there have been debates about whether it is or not. Today, no, there's nobody fishing. So today it's just a BS show. And uh, if, if we happen to get a fisherman, then we can change your status. No, Liam, they're gone from Tuesday to Thursday. Yeah, they're Tuesday, Thursday now. I, I, I guess I was supposed to remember that, and I didn't. <laughs> you guys can all send little guy some treats for waking me up this morning. Because if we go to bed early, then he... Uh, he wakes up early. Is this time change messing everybody up still? Yep. Yep. I hate it. I'm not going to lie. I hate it. I hate I it. Don't, I don't mind this one as bad as I do the one in the fall, though. The one in the fall really screws me up. Is I'm used to waking up at three o'clock in the morning and now I wake up at two and I'm like, yeah. oh, good night. It's only two o'clock. It's supposed to be three. <laughs> exactly. You know, your mind and body is accustomed to that. Denise said, I've already adjusted. 
Denise, you ain't right. I've noticed that daytime hours, man, during the day, it goes by a lot faster. <sighs> you'll be doing something like 10 o'clock in the morning and you'll be doing something. Look up, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. Like, good night. Yep. Yep. And that just keeps happening. The older I get, the faster it goes, man. Yeah. I know I'm not right. I think I thaw out my bluegill head to take with me this weekend. I got some shrimp that I put in some baggies with some garlic. I don't know if that works or not, but we're going to try it, see what happens. And I got a box of night crawlers. Yeah, it reminds me. I got to send that package out from J Dog today for that uh, that stuff you put that chicken liver in. That way, y'all have it by this weekend. Oh, really? What, you, what kind of stuff are you talking about? Uh, this is, I ain't got it packaged yet. I got to get some chemicals. Like the mesh stuff or whatever? Is that what you're talking about? The Yeah, yeah, I got some of that stuff, too. Mine's not like that. I like that a lot better, but Thank I just you. got Thank some. You. Yeah, I got some that's in a roll that I tie one in with that elastic thread stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. And then I put the chicken liver on the hook and pull it up over it and tie the thread around the top of it. I yeah, hate this, chicken liver. Hey, you know how most people cut their cut bait and the gut pocket will fall out? Yeah. You take that gut, you take cut your piece out with the gut pocket in there. You can actually put that inside there and tighten it down with a yeah. gut pocket. Just put it on your hook, throw it out there, and that saves your cut bait and the gut pocket. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> And he said she got yeah. some of that. I don't use the liver. Oh, that's right. You had a kill, didn't you? Uh, <laughs> Catfish fever is your name, Lynn, is it? Yep. Okay. Yeah, you had a fish kill, didn't you? I'd, I'd be afraid to use that stuff for sure, man, because something killed them fish. And whatever it is, has definitely gotten into the meat now. But I suppose you could still use it as bait. Yeah. As long as you cut the bottom side, if the car's laying on the side dead, use the bottom part. That's where all the blood's at. Yeah. Want to Sandy? <coughs> Sandy Toes. Good morning, honey. How are you today? It's good to see you. Yep, that's true, Uncle Lou. What I'm going to like about this stuff is, is that when I cut my skipjack, I can take the guts out, put them in there. And, oh, man, them blues eat that up. So when the big channel cats. Oh, wow, Lynn, I never thought about that. Yeah. God, I hope they're not eating them. Damn, yeah, I never thought about that. That sucks. Sandy said, how are you gentlemen holding up three legs at a time? <laughs> Because I, I love bald eagles, man. Yep. Three different times now I've caught them in the fields eating something. One of them I got on video. The other two times I just watched them for a little bit. We have a monster bald eagle here, a big one. And when them geese fly in, oh, he's a murderer, man. He'll tap <laughs> yeah. it down and, and he'll jump with it a little bit and then he'll drop it and he'll go kill another one you'll see a whole trail of dead geese behind him <laughs> no but i've used shad guts before we used to at the bait house used to sell like a tub of chicken livers or a tub of shad guts if you wanted to. Yeah. you talk about some gross stuff man is get you a tub of some shad guts yep <laughs> those guys used to go up there and get the guts and five gallon bucket full up here at Tyson. Go out there on that river and dump them with the current wash them down in this little eddy. And they'll sit yeah. there and catch big, big, I mean, some big channel cats out of there. Oh, really, Sandy Toes? No kidding. Yeah, they're huge too, man. Yeah, I, I didn't realize I didn't realize how big seals were until I seen them 
in California at that time surfing. I was like, damn, those things are huge. Yeah, I think they, I seen a deal, a special on where they used to talk about how they was getting overpopulated. Mm-hmm. Like, where's all the orcas and the great whites that eat them things? Yeah, exactly. Bring in the predators. We need the predators here. Come and eat free food. Looks like Eric's made the word. So I wonder on them sea lions what they're going to do with the carcasses when they're done. Well, Lynn, get you some chickens. Yeah, them sea lions be, can be aggressive, especially if you're on the beach that they're on. They don't want you on that beach. <laughs> Ain't, ain't the tiger seal that that a, that a key if it gets too close to it? It actually well, come at you. A what? Tiger seal. Oh, I don't know. I just know they're huge. When I know, I just thought they were little bitty guys, but the ones the seals I seen were about four and a half, mm -hmm. five feet long, probably. Morning, yeah. NJ. Hey, good morning, NJ, buddy. How are you? I guess I'm going to clean the house today, man. It needs it. I can't keep up. No, Seal will take you up. It's in your way. Yeah, well, <laughs> Seal's don't play. Nope. They'll also surf with you. <laughs> I was watching that one video uh, down in Australia where the seal was swimming around and this orcas came up, tried to get it, and that seal jumped up in the boat to get away. <laughs> yep, yeah, I've seen that one. I think. In the water, like, uh, okay, what do I do now? There's two orcas swimming around that boat. Hey, NJ, I had your shirt on yesterday, buddy. Bad part is I got a white dog and a black shirt and a white dog do not mix well. Oh. Yeah, we got a lot of them up here, Lou. I know uh, when I was out there carp fishing a couple summers ago, I'd see the, and I don't know where seagulls come from in the middle of Indiana, but they're there. And uh, <clears throat> I'd see them circling and diving in the water out in the middle of the lake. And I, figured they was catching shad so at least i'm gonna buy a throw net and at least i know uh when i see him doing it i can boat over and maybe cast net in and catch some of them <laughs> i hear that sandy i'm with you sandy Catch nothing getting ready now. <laughs> are you are you going out this early? Well, I guess it gets day. It's probably daylight there now, isn't it, NJ? Oh, it's got to be seven o'clock where he's at. What that wind's blowing out there? Let's see. It's six thirty here. It's six thirty there. I think we're the same time. Yeah, but I know the sun comes up there a lot earlier. Well, it's five thirty here. Five twenty-eight. I remember my uh, ex, her mom and stepdad had a place in Bar Harbor, Maine. And uh, I forget what time she said it got daylight there. But in the wintertime, it got dark at like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I got faith in you, NJ. Go get them. Unless it's just been cold or something. Hey, there's Bernie Sanchez. 
Good morning. Uh, good morning. I don't think I know you, but we'll give you a chance. Right. It comes in lives quite a bit of them. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I, I just never heard the name before I gave you a wrench. Yeah, bears should be good right now. They're still trashed. It's too cold. They ain't stupid. <coughs> Bears aren't hibernating here if they're around up northern Missouri because it's everything's budding out green and up here. Yeah, our trees are budding out. We've got two days of blow freezing weather, and our, my poor maple tree out there probably don't stand a chance. Morning, that fishing channel. How are you today, buddy? <clears throat> Morning, fishing channel. I can't believe my allergies are kicking in already. Start eating a spoonful of honey. Yeah, I forgot about that. I got some, actually. I'm going to try that. Now that you mentioned it, I'm going to do that this morning. I got some locally grown honey. I'm still trying to get a hold of that guy that gets honey over here. See if he's got more of that cotton honey. It's green colored. Yeah, it's 29 here, the fishing channel, so I'm with you. It's cold this morning. Uh, Sandy, it's not the right kind of maple. There's <laughs> mm -hmm. only a certain type of maple you can do that too. <laughs> yeah, and that's only in the fall time. Yep, and mostly Canada. <laughs> there are some here that you can do that too, but they ain't none around my area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they used where is it? Somewhere around here, they used to have a maple syrup, uh, maple syrup festival. I can't remember where it was now. And we'd go every year and buy a bottle of maple syrup. That you know, pretty much last year the whole year. Yeah, I mean they do make they they do make maple here in, in the U.S., but it's only <laughs> certain. Let's people plant the trees and they can do it. What amazes me is how they put that plug in it to plug the hole and they can open it up, let it drain. Yep. Pontoon Jedi. I like that, Bernard. Or I can't pronounce your name. I'm sorry. Sugar Maple. Yeah, the one I got out here is the fiery red maple. Turns three shades of colors, and then if the leaves are still on it, it the tree looks like it's on fire. Yeah. There you go, Cody. Mrs. Butterworth. <laughs> Mrs. Butterworth. Yeah, isn't that one the PC people that made him change the name of? Yeah, I want to, yeah. And the family... Of Mrs. Butter was like, wait a minute, you know, she was proud that her name was on that, but on that syrup. Yep. <clears throat> These do-gooders don't bother to to ask the people that it actually affects. They just assume that they're offended, so they'll stand up for them. Like, yeah, how about you go do something that's worth worth doing? Yep, it's maple syrup. All your syrup comes from trees. <laughs> okay, Bernie, I'll call you Bernie from now on then. That's cool. Burn, okay, Burnaby. All right, I'm with you. almost like Barnaby Jones, only Burnaby. All right, I'm with you now. I'm a little slow, so thanks. <laughs> Yeah, Eric must be picking his truck up. He 
Well, when there's how many stops he has, you'll know what kind of mood he's in when he gets back. Yeah. <laughs> he's pumped to back the boat. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> And yep. my name's Bugman, like the insect. <laughs> and they just call me Rustic or Rusty. <laughs> yeah. I heard that Marty Jones all my life. <laughs> oh, I bet you did, dude. I'm sorry. I didn't know how old you was, so I didn't know if he was old enough to even know who that was. Jed Clampett. Become a detective. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of hard to take him serious in that row after the hillbillies on it. One hundred percent. That's the bad part about doing a TV show that gets real popular like that. Your your career is pretty much done because your your cast is you know everyone's going to know you as that for the rest of your life. So you better make stacks of money while you're doing it for when you're done. If you go back and look at the very first episodes of that show, Barbie Jones, uh, it kind of, kind of, sometimes let it slip trying to let talk like Jay Clamp. Yeah. <laughs> I remember them shows. This is my stepdad watched that crap all the time. I wonder if my coffee's done yet. I bet it is. Yeah, I can't wait till Wednesday to get up there and uh, Roger shows up, gets fish with him. Who's that? Roger Muskrat. Oh, really? Yep. Where you, are you going skipjack fishing? Yeah. Nice. Nice. That's cool. Yeah, Roger's a nice guy, man. I don't care what nobody says. I like him. Yep. Morning, John. Morning, John. Yeah. I was at uh, CatCon, and I was standing there talking to Jody. Roger looked up and seen me. He was sitting at the table, and I pointed at him, and he got up, come over there, and shook my hand. And everything I'm like, ooh. Yeah, he, he's a good dude, man. He's invited me to go fishing when I get the chance to travel. Yeah, he invited me to come up and go fishing with him. I yeah, might he's, have a good to ways, he's a good ways east of me in Ohio, you know what I mean? Southeast, actually. So it, I'm not sure how long it takes to get over there. Yeah, it's going to take him five and a half hours to get to uh, where we're going to be fishing at Skipjack. And I'm sitting here thinking, after the after Saturday, Saturday night show, that uh, well, if he's gonna drive that far, I said, I said, when I go up to see John, I guess I'm gonna run by there and go fishing with him. Yeah, or at least go by there and say hi to him. Yeah, I'm with you, Bernie. Man, I like I'm an old show guy. I love, in my opinion, Andy Griffith. Andy Griffith is the all around best show ever made for television, as far as quality goes, you know quality family programming yeah, if it would if it would for barney that show wouldn't have been a hit i don't think your buddy's ready to go yet i don't think she wants to go dude i think you're on your own this morning yeah i think you have to go out there and forge the wilderness by yourself this morning Oh, big bad creatures out there to get you today. Get over here. 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 Got you yeah, good morning, John. Oh, no, I'm not paralyzed today. Ah, there you go, buddy. <laughs> We're 
Where'd you go, small water? <laughs> small water like the water. Hey, John. Uh, oh, did something happen with your mother this weekend? I, I can't thinking someone told me something happened with their mom and I can't remember who it was. I can't remember if it was you or not. Well, I got me a, got my wife a ice maker for Christmas. That things makes ice faster than I've ever seen. One of the kind sits on the counter? Yeah. I had one of those. Yeah, it does. It, it does real well, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. She, she drinks. She uses ice all day constantly in a me too and uh which i put my drinks in the refrigerator i just drink it out of the refrigerator but she gotta have ice so well i we take mine in the fridge but i still use ice yeah. well we i was paying a fortune in ice up here at the store and i'm like Shh, i know what to get her for christmas I might get her an ice yeah. maker yeah okay hey, Bernie, bro, you bro. Take care. Out, i like your uh Little avatar thing. In fact, I had to go out yesterday. My don't tread on my flag and blow down off the garage. So I had to fold it up and I'll figure out how to mount it better when it gets nice yeah. out. Oh, wait. I'm thinking. I don't, you know what? I don't know if I'm. What am I thinking here? I got to see if I'm subbing to those guys or not. Let's see, go to channel. There we go. Subscribe. All right. I didn't think it was. Hey, uh, Bernie, I subbed to you, brother. Sorry. I didn't even think about it. No, little guy. Well, you, oh, you want to go out now? Huh? I done turned around and got comfortable again. I'm too far away. You get back over here. You're going out. I don't care what you say. If I get my fat butt up out of this chair and you're going outside, come on, let's go back. You got my mind. He's the best dog. Who is the best dog in this room at this very moment? Who is the best dog in this room at this very moment? I'm gonna have to say you are. Oh, my thing is back. I'm telling something. Oh, oh buddy, buddy. No, nope, this way. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope, nope. Can't go that way, remember? Tell me the see. You're in that case, I told you the thing was tangled up. You can't go that way. Come on, dummy. There you go. You were stuck. Why you come on? Let's go. Get back this way. <laughs> oh, I seen two snowflakes. Snowflakes. Right now you're taking a huge bond for the beach until you can't walk on anything. Hold on. I'm going to get a gate to put over there so you can't do that. Yeah, I'm going to get a pair of feet there. Come on. I told you you can't go that direction, dummy. That's why I had all that stuff piled up there so you wouldn't go that way. Ah, what you want, come on. Get up here. I know. I can't help it, you're not real smart. That's how God works. He makes you cute if you're not very smart, see. I'm okay. just glad I'm not smart. <laughs> no, John, uh, he they decided to go from Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday only. He'll be live in the morning. Hey, no worries, Bernie, better. No worries at all. I don't know why I didn't think about it. Huh. Oh, I got to try that honey thing. Oh, come uh, on. Icon, but I can't figure out why he put a skipjack on there. That's not a skip check. It's a. Yeah, they can't take another week off right now. Are you kidding me? I got plans this week. I got a lot of crap to get done. I dropped Pop off Thursday. 
And depending on what time mom gets done at the doctor, there's a good chance I head to J Dogs Thursday evening. I don't know yet. Yeah. What you do? Oh, uh, let me tell you, Bug Man, your name went into the drawing for that big prize package in May. What's that? Your name got put in since you won the, that shirt Saturday night. Your name got put in the drawing for the uh, the big prize package in May. Oh, okay. I didn't know nothing about it. Yeah, we're giving away a huge prize package in May. What are you doing, little guy here? Well, come on, get up here, and we'll, we'll you just been around here and talk to the people with me. Come on. What do you want, huh? Do you want a treat because you went outside? Do you think you actually earned a treat with that little trip out there? <laughs> I don't know, man. That's pushing it. Morning, Mr. Mosley. He's gone for two years. He's gone. Come here. Go back to live in the morning. Let me clean your eyes. You know, Dad can't stand no movie guys. You know, I hate them. I don't know. I ain't seen or heard from them all week. You're in trouble, Tilly. I found the muzzles yesterday out in the garage. I'm going to cut your toenails. I'm going to drug you up and cut your toenails. Come here, little guy. There you go. Hold on. Ah, okay, Till. Little guy this way. There you go. Now you're learning. Go that way, Tilly. Go on, drop the front way. Go that way. There you go. Go on. Nope. That way. Go straight. No, don't turn. Go straight. Look, man, what's that fish you're holding in your icon there? A walleye. Yeah. It's the first walleye I ever caught in my life, actually. Good looking fish. You got some big bottom fins there. Man, dude, I didn't know what I didn't know the size limits. I now I know I could have kept him in. That would have fed the, that would have fed everybody in this house one night. Oh yeah. It's look like it's long enough to legal to keep too. Oh, it was. 14 inches is, is the limit, and it was well over 14 inches. Oh, yeah. Hey, morning, Steve Mosley. Well, I guess they're doing Tuesday to Thursday now, Steve. I didn't know. I forgot. Yep, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So you may have me Friday and Monday. I don't know yet. We play the Monday part by year. I got Friday on lockdown. Yeah, he's got Friday locked down tighter than a jock strap. That's right. Then Friday's show may come to you live from J Dog's boat. Well, there you go. If I go down Thursday evening, it will. If not, Friday's show will come to you live from on the road to J Dog's. Which, from where I live, man, there just ain't a good direct route there. Not anything going, you know, straight. I got to go, like, dead south of me for about an hour, maybe. And then... Well, how, long, how long does it take to get to J-Dogs? A couple hours. That ain't bad. Yeah, a typical person from here to there probably make it in two hours and 15 minutes or so. It takes me about three. Because I really just don't get in a hurry. We've had this discussion before. I don't hurry no more. Just get from point A to point B. It's all I care about. Yeah, and I don't care how long it takes me or what time I get there. Unless I tell you, hey, I'm going to be there at 6, then I'm probably going to be there at 5.30. I just make sure I leave extra early to get wherever it is I got to be. Because I hate people who are late. That's my pet peeve. You tell me you're going to be there at 6, and you need to be there at 6. There you go. Uncle Lou's got my, my life philosophy down. Once I hit 50, I'm in no rush. And they've seen it firsthand on some of my lives, like going to Walmart and stuff. I just don't get in a hurry. It ain't like I got anywhere to be, you know what I mean? The only thing I got left to look forward to is dying. 
So I might as well take my time getting there. <laughs> That's one time I said I don't blame you. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know where to get there. I'm on at least another 25 <laughs> years. Until now, look, you got that old tape up over there. Yeah, I'm not undoing it again, everybody. You're just going to have to make do with what you got till the morning time. Well, we're off. Looks like it's been raining right there where Eric's at. Huh? It looks like it's been raining there. Nah. Cold with the rain. Hey, it's 7 o'clock, and that's the second one already, so you probably won't get no more until lunchtime, unless Mom gets up. Here, little guy. Here. Pretty tardy, but I'm here, too. Oh, goodness. I'm going to have to buy a new chair, I think. I spend too much time in them, and I'm too fat. It breaks them down too quick. That's Oh, yeah, I'll probably outweigh you. Not by much. Well, yeah, you're a big guy, so I weigh more than I'm supposed to. I know that. Oh, I do too. <laughs> yeah, I weigh a lot more than I'm supposed to. Check Eric out with the long backup. <laughs> Well, you I just realized I only got one line of death, but I ain't trying to run out. I thought he forgot something. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't forget anything. I just I don't want to run out of death. Even though I only got, only got seven stops, but I'd rather have it in my truck and not need it. Need it and not have it, you know? What's that? Yep. What'd you forget? Death. I can't hear you. Death that for that diesel. Oh. I thought you said your gun. Carry that. You Anymore. I need to deliver pizzas. Yes, I carry that with me everywhere. You don't carry a gun every day? I do. If I'm going from here to the gas station, I'm taking my pistol with me. I hope Uncle Luke got his foot propped up. Yeah, he better have. Yeah, I'm going to have to call my son and have him and the family come over and do the super cleaning like we done about a month ago. Morning, stand three. There he is. Good morning, buddy. Yep, stand three. I'll get the information for your shirt over there to Amanda also when I said bug man's. <clears throat> it's there today. Yep, I ain't in no hurry to die, but I know where I'm going if I do die, so I ain't real worried about that part neither. Well, and it's not that I want to get there anytime soon, but. Yes, it's one of those mornings that didn't want to me to sit up and have coffee. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you'll get there, buddy. Yeah, I always used to try to tell myself that every day it gets better, even though some days it doesn't really get better than the day before. I know my shoulder, whenever uh, it feels good for about a day or two, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I wish they'd do something with it. It hurts so bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my left knee, man, I don't know how much longer I'm going to make it. It's worse than my right one was when I got it replaced now. I mean, it's 
thank God the Aleve and the ibuprofen is still working when I go to the grocery. But by the time I'm at the checkout, I'm gimping pretty good. Yeah, you, you might need to get that. I was limping so bad the one day the lady asked me if I needed help to the uh to the car. <laughs> Morning, Danny. Sandy said, of course, it gets better. I get prettier. John still looks like John. <laughs> Boy, that's a fact. That's what my <laughs> best friend's dad used to always say. He'd say, Boy, I can't wait till tomorrow. And I'm like, Why is that, man? Said, well, I get prettier every day. <laughs> and I'd be like, Yeah, but you can't change profession. So I ain't really got nothing to look forward to. Yeah, I, I look forward to just waking up in the mornings. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing, little guy? You can't get back there. There's hooks and stuff back there. If I wake up in the mornings, I've accomplished a great deal. <laughs> yeah. Come here. I'm going to pick you up. But you are getting on my nerves today. But are you doing this on purpose? Huh? Come here. There. You won't be on camera or something. Is that what you want today? Huh? Here. Put you on camera. When I hurt myself, I down on this well, it's too far from my heart to kill me. But mm -hmm. now that it started to get closer up to around my heart area, I'm like, oh, mercy. <laughs> That's what my heart teacher used to say. Oh, you're all right. That's too far from your heart to kill you. Yeah. Is this what you wanted? Huh? Is this what you've been bothering me for all morning? Huh? Is that what you want to face me this time? Huh? Mm -hmm. That's what you wanted. Why don't you quit leaning over? You quit leaning towards my face. You hear? Mm -hmm. Good boy today, huh? Are you going to be a good puppy today, huh? Can we count on that? Say hi, everybody. I am the most spoiled puppy on the world. I'm the most spoiled guy in the world. I wake up. hope nothing fell off. Hope you don't get the dropsies either. What's the matter, Danny Stone? You got a uh, lung infection or something? Hmm? Yeah. He loves his daddy a little bit. Huh? You love your daddy a little bit. Hmm. You love your daddy a little bit today, huh? Well, hmm. yeah, there. They just need to make a There's no biting when you work with my thumbs. Well, there you go. Ah, that hurts so bad. <laughs> Sandy. All right, cool, Stan Three. Is that going to slow down your ability to go fishing until you get that done, or you have another book to do until you do? Quit. Quit so fooled. You better quit being such a spoiled little man. What do you want now, huh? <clears throat> There, now they can see you. Say hi, everybody. My name's Little Man. I don't play. I run the show around here. Don't you, little guy? Huh? Tell them. So this is my crib. My crib, and I'm... Uh-oh, who's that? What do you see in there? Huh? Who's in there? You want to go see? Who is that? Is that your grandma? Is your grandma up? You can go find her. Go oh, on. Yeah. Go off Facebook Marketplace if you're lucky. Yeah, if you live close to like the ocean or something, I'll bet they have like, you know, boat scrap yards like they do, you know, pick apart here or whatever. Yeah. Hey, I'm glad you're ready for what's next here, 39, but guess what? Whatever's next ain't going to happen here, friend. There we go. 
ago has a band and a never come back thing right there. I don't care who you are. Come in here on Monday morning spewing it. Don't get me started, dude. You don't know a person like me. Somebody, somebody messing with you, buggy? I don't know. Some guy come in and said something about I don't forget what they said, but they used the MF word. I'm like, nah, man, not on Monday morning, you don't. Huh. I didn't see it. It come up on TV. Yeah, it come up on the laptop. I agree with you there, Stan. Build it cheaper. I'm not the guy who bought a jumped up, tore up boat just to get the console out of it. Thank you for us participants. <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows that person. If you do, tell them to to get with me if they uh, if they're somebody's friend or whatever. But I don't know them and just come in on Monday morning and the first comment out oh. your mouse motherfucker. It's like, nah, dude, you picked the wrong show at the wrong place at the wrong time. No, don't know that person. Morning, Chad. Is it really, Uncle Lou? See, I've only been there a couple times. Morning, morning, Chad. Yeah, you would think yeah. people are smart enough not to fall for that crap anymore. Yep, yeah, like John ordered ordered him an e bike off off the Facebook marketplace, and uh, yeah. I seen pictures of it and everything. He bought it, got it pretty cheap when he. He's on the road, so he called Miss Kim. Said, "Come in." Says, "Yeah, your e-bike's here." It turned out to be a, just a junked-up phone holder. A what? Made all me for a phone holder. You're kidding me. No. Oh, he yeah. was. Like, Remember what your grandfather told you: if it sounds too good to be true, it is. It is. <laughs> and the other thing: nothing's free. There ain't nobody giving stuff away for free if they tell you they are you got to question their motive first a why are you giving this away for free and b why are you giving it to me for free it's like the one get a free hat just pay 29.95 j dog good morning j dog Hey, what's up, sunshine? This boat was free. <laughs> <laughs> J Dog, one of them marketplace hustlers, he'll sell you something. Mm -hmm. We had to get it out of the yard. Yeah, now that's true. You every now and then you'll come across a snag like that. Lou said, I've given a lot of stuff for free, 99. Yep. I know a guy who had an ATV for sale, and someone in Georgia said they would give him extra delivery when he got there. They said they wanted to test drive it. They never came back. Are you, how stupid can a person be? I've been like, yeah, dude, you can test drive this. Give me your wallet with your driver's license, your credit cards, and your address in it. Then I'll let you test drive this all you want. <laughs> My God. Say, dog, I can sell ketchup popsicle to a woman wearing white gloves. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, man, they're just. Maybe I'm just a skeptic in life, but I'm telling you, I don't, I don't trust anyone. And if it's free or they're being too nice, I have to check the motive first. You know, what's your motive for being so nice to me? Now, don't get me wrong. There's legitimately nice people out there, but you can usually tell those ones. Well, you tell people, you going to give it to me, give it away for free? Give it to me. All right, I'll take it. Bring it to my house. Drop it off. I ain't coming to get it. 
Hey, double hook. Hope you're feeling better. So did they put it? Did they have to go in and put a stint in DHA? Huh? I think they put two in. Oh, did they really? Two stints? No kidding. That's what I heard, but somebody said it was two stints. Hey, crusty toes. You got that I right. I don't know what the symptoms for those are, man. They ain't crusty no more, J-Dog. I've been using lotion on them. <laughs> crusty toes. <laughs> oh, she's talk he's talking sandy toes. Yeah. Hey, Dave, what was the symptoms you had, man? You know, I got some nitro pills up here from grandma i should probably get one of them little metal bottle things that screw lid screws on you put on a necklace or whatever i That's should probably I get one of those and put some in it i think what i heard double hook that uh they had to put two stents in well god bless you brother i'm, I'm glad you're still here your family will be lost without you, man. Okay, yeah, extreme chest pain and sweating. All right, well, the sweating part I always do, but the chest pain. Did it feel like, like a, a cramp in your chest? Like it just got real tight and you couldn't breathe or anything, you know what I mean? I don't know. I got this. Um, I need to start exercise. I got this worry about having a heart attack because I'm 60 and I'm fat and I smoke. Had heartburn real bad, huh? Well, they go up through your groin. I know they did on my grandmother when she had that heart attack. She was 97, I think, when she had it. And after the way everything turned out with the dementia and stuff like that, in the long run, I wish we'd have probably just let her go then, but I didn't know, you know. The doctors, you know, sitting there talking about just, you know, just you know riding it out and waiting or whatever but she's sitting there awake and i'm like i can't just not do anything if she's sitting here awake looking at me you know Shh, little guy you stop that right now <laughs> Okay, that's what I was wanting, some kind of some kind of an example that I would understand. I understand. I like someone put a drill in my chest. Okay. Yeah, I missed my last physical last month. I need to reschedule. I got to get that done. You still in the hospital, brother? Oh, yeah, you are, ain't you? Yeah, I'm all scruffy. I don't have no brush. That's uh, all right. I am, too, and I, I just look like this every day, though. Yeah, so what happened was was I was working in the shop. I was making rod holders and stuff, and uh, I got hot and sweaty, and I didn't feel good. I felt like I was drunk, and uh, like my, my uh, vision and stuff was not straight and i went in the house and told naomi i didn't feel good i was going to just take a shower so i got in the shower and i passed out in the shower and went to the bathroom all over myself and uh woke up and uh hollered for help 
And uh, it just felt like somebody was running a half inch drill into my chest and just kept drilling and drilling and drilling. It was, it was nothing. I mean, take the most severe heartburn, you know, in a just an acid reflux you've ever had and times that by a thousand. Okay. So I, I guarantee you, you'll know that it's not acid reflux if you're yeah. having an attack. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. Uh, but I, uh, I told Naomi, I think I need to call 911. And of course, being Naomi, she's like, well, call mama first because her mom, uh, was a doctor just retired, you know, two years ago and actually still has her practicing license, just doesn't practice. And, um, uh, she said, I told her what was going on and she can just hear it in my voice, but she said, everything you're telling me, you're having a heart attack and it's a bad one. Call 911. 911 yeah. got there. They put a four lead on me and the, they, the four lead went nuts. So they stuck a 12 lead on me and the 12 lead showed that I had two drops. I was, I was spasming in both chambers, both lower chambers internally. And, uh, which when I got here, the doctor said if it would have been, an, if, if they would have drove slower in the ambulance or took another 10 or 15 minutes, I'd have been dead. Cause at the time that I got into where they, uh, into the, I, as soon as I got here, I was only here three minutes before they took me to the cath lab. Yeah. yeah. They said that, that it was that bad. And then when I came out of there, doc told me, he's like, he's like, uh, your, your heart was in full spasms and, and, uh, you know, he's like, you only had another 10 or 15 minutes and you were dead. Yeah, full cardiac. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was in full cardiac arrest. They, uh, they drove me over here over 100 mile an hour. And they're supposed to only go 90. Yeah. Yeah, for some reason I got uh, a fear of that or I've been worried about the last couple of years. Because I'm fat. I mean, I've never yeah. been heavy well, before. They told me that... Uh, I did the, that this is all self-inflicted so oh sure it's all diet, diet lifestyle and the, yeah. and the bad thing is i went all meat you know recently and it wasn't the all meat that killed me it was the six slices of bacon every morning yeah yeah but they said that they said that when they were when he went in to do the stint as soon as he uh started to run the stint up i actually died hmm. and then as soon as he Put that balloon in there and blew it up and put that first stint in it just it started to flow again and and uh they did their thing and i'm here nice wasn't god didn't want you yet yeah so i guess i'll be like job and take my lesson and change my life yeah that's that's the biggest part right there dude i'm with yeah, you but y'all know me i don't have that addictive personality so i mean you don't get, you're not going to get that second chance again like that. So yeah, I'm, no. I understand entirely. They, uh, but I, I haven't had a soda pop in 10 or 12 years. I don't even know how long now. Um, I don't smoke. Um, well, not cigarettes. <laughs> um, well, you can always switch the gummies there. So you ain't got to worry about that. Yeah. Well, I do that too. I got to control my pain somehow. Um, oh sure, one hundred percent. Yeah, and I, and I don't take body. I don't take uh, any kind of pills, but I guess now I'm going to have to take a baby aspirin and a blood yeah. thinner for blood thinner yeah. for a year because of the stents. They said that the stents need about a year before your body puts like a little coating over them, so yeah. the you know the uh, they won't hold a clot because now yeah. the platelets will just stick to the wires. And that blood thinner stuff you got to be real careful while you're taking that uh, they're they're putting me on since i have uh i mean since i have medicare they're uh they're putting me on uh uh the name brand one so yeah <laughs> there's a lot less side effects with this newer one that they got out well i just mean and I they know. want me they want me on a statin so, you know, to lower my cholesterol, but I told them that I'll only take the statin for 30 days to get a start on it. But then after that, I won't need it. Yeah, I know. And the doctor's like, well, as long as you change your diet, you won't. But statins are the worst thing you can take. They strip your bodies of minerals and what I mean, are they? Cholesterol? Uh, the statins, cholesterol, statin is a cholesterol. Med they just say statins because it covers the whole gamut of all the cholesterol medicines. Yeah. But the cholesterol medicines, when they take the cholesterol out of your body, they also take, you know, the zinc, calcium, really? you know, they make your, it makes your bones weaker. Huh. 
it's not good. It, the best thing to do is just change your diet. So like yeah. five years ago, I, uh, I mean, you know, I was a personal trainer when I was young. I didn't train but a couple people, but I mostly did it for myself. And uh, I mean, I know what to do. It just so five years ago or whatever, four years ago, I got down to 200 pounds just because I was eating uh, vegetarian at that time. So and uh, basically, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to just being vegetarian and uh, eat meat twice a week or three times a week. But chicken or you know, pork. And he said, I could have a steak once a month, but. I know a friend of mine is on blood thinners. He has to carry a little first aid kit with him in case he gets. Oh cut. yeah. He and me being, yeah. Well, if you guys watch me tie, you always see sores all over my hands. Cause I'm always cutting myself in the shop. So now I just have to be careful. It's like the, when I was doing my jig tie on Friday, I stabbed myself in the forearm with my scissors because I reached over to put the trash in the uh, trash, but it was stuck to my finger. So I flicked it. And when I did, I stabbed the scissors with, I, st I had the scissors in this hand and I stabbed my other arm. Hey, Gig, what's up, man? You fishing today, buddy? Morning, Gig and Billy. But I just wanted to come up here. That was just way too much to keep trying to say in chat. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. I just, I just needed some information on it. All, so I've what happened to Hog Leg? Deals. I thought I Hog Leg was supposed to be back on Tuesday. today. I guess they're only doing Tuesday to Thursday now or something. Mm -hmm. That's I, right. They said they I'm was sure going to do that. I'm sure we talked about it, but I just don't remember because that's my Yeah, brain. Yeah, they said something about it before they went uh, before they went on their, you know, their, took their week off. They said something about it, and, and uh, everybody was teasing that you're just going to have to run the Monday and Friday. So, I guess now you got a Monday and a Friday show. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> it'll just it'll just increase your subscribers and stuff. And yeah, I don't even know how many I have, dude. I don't even worry yeah. about that stuff. Most you know people I mean? don't worry about it, but it'll still it'll still help help get the word out more and get more friends in here, and maybe we'll meet yeah. some more people. And maybe I'll learn somebody will teach me how to do it. Yeah, that's how I look at it, and that's that was one of the reasons why I got on. YouTube was just uh, basically to share what little knowledge I got and to learn from others. So that's what I think this should all be about is sharing, sharing each other out and sharing the community. It's just like when, uh, come on, let's go. Okay, You would know, boogie. Yeah, he's got to go put the dog out, sounds like. But Rustic, you were one of the first ones that I ever. Can you hear me, Rustic? Yeah. You were one of the first ones that I ever gave a shirt and stuff to. And uh, one of the first ones that actually started to follow me and stuff. And, you know, I, I, know, I know we don't have much interaction because, we, I mean, our schedules just don't align too much. But I've always enjoyed watching your stuff. And then when I got to meet you at CatCon, that was awesome. I, I still can't get over how tall you actually are. Taller than some, shorter than some. Yeah. Say taller well, when, you're most, in a, when you're sitting in a wheelchair and you, you've got to kink oh, your neck her. real hard to look up. Not her. Yeah. He, little guy ran out the side gate there. And now he's got his lead tangled up, and I'm not I going out there this early. I got to lose some weight to wear it again, but. <laughs> Well, doctor said that I need to, or the, not the doctor, the uh, uh, occupational therapist lady. She said that I, I uh, according to my chart or whatever height and all that, I'm only supposed to be like 180 pounds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You uh, know how I know, Jay Dog, because I've fed it to a lot of women. Or I shouldn't say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ray Dog said, uh, "Double Hook, don't watch my channel." <laughs> yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. And Jody said, I caught you a fish yesterday, Dave. I seen that. I got after I got off of the after I got off of there, I watched. Hey Gig, what kind of weather you got? Wind? Is it raining? I'm, I'm gonna tell you man. I've got to take a muscle relaxer to, to relax that muscle in my shoulder. It gets to hurting pulling it up. And yesterday I slept all day. <laughs> See, I can't take those because that's what it does to me. They literally knock me out. 
Oh, me too. Good I'll morning, take it Steve. that night and sleep all night long. Get up about an hour the next morning, then I'll lay back down. Or I'll sit in a chair and I'll pass out till three yes. o'clock now. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I can't take muscle relaxers. The, I don't care if every muscle in my body is cramping. I can't take them. I, I I have to on that shoulder. If I don't, that shoulder starts doing like the wave in there and starts yep. curling, and it, and all oh, 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 that's a pain. Yeah, yeah yes, I understand that, buddy. Especially yesterday, there, I was still used to it. Yesterday, I was still having uh, irregular heartbeat and stuff, so that's why they kept me a couple days. That's why they kept me yeah. until th this morning. And they're going to do another EKG this morning, and if it's clear, they're going to send me home. Yeah, I was going to tell them, y'all keep me as long as you want until you know I'm good. Yeah, you going to come back. Massive vortex, you know? Yeah. They're going to mark you a couple days. Yeah. Well, and then uh, they, they told me that, uh, like, Yesterday morning is when I was having all the trouble, you know, overnight, yesterday night, and then the yesterday morning is when I was having all the trouble. But about noon or so yesterday, everything started to clear up, and they got me up and, and uh, started moving around and stuff. And then, of course, Naomi and, and my mother-in-law showed up with my wheelchair, so then I had my own wheels back, so I, I, felt, a lot, I felt a lot better and was able to get down and wheel around and stuff, so... Well, I know your past couple of lives, you look kind of pale, but it's like you got some good color in your well, face they, now. Well, now, now that this has happened, and and we look back at hindsight, for the last month, I've been having uh, little issues. So, about like even when we went to CatCon, when we were there at CatCon, even though Naomi was sick with her back and stuff, uh, after we left from CatCon and went back to the motel. I actually had some chest pain and stuff and got sweaty and flashy and lightheaded, but I just laid down and went to sleep and then woke up the next day and I was fine. And then, uh, but a few times since then I've had to where I had to, like, I was, I was willing, you know, pretty fast downtown. And when I got home, I was just like, my heart was pounding and it didn't feel like it was, you know, beating right. And I'm just like, well, you're getting old and fat. And I just kept saying that soft stuff to myself. But then this happened Friday. And now that I look back, I was, you know, I'm wondering if I've been having problems the whole time. And, and, uh, the, uh, the one artery, the one artery was an 80% blockage. Yeah. So I've been, I've been having trouble the whole month. Well, Probably. it's like you said, your last live you had, you look kind of palish, but now you got plenty of color in your face again. Yeah. So I just, I, I guess I just wasn't paying attention to my body. So, yeah. and you know, the bad thing is, is I tell everybody, pay attention to yourself. You know, tomorrow's not promised. Hug a friend. I didn't know I was talking about myself this whole time. Exactly. <laughs> But I mean, it is what it is. I'm better now, so now I just got to learn my lesson and go from here. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you you get a second chance. Not everybody does, man. So yeah. Well, they yeah. said only Take one. In they said only one in twenty people survive this, and the only reason why they do is because they get to the hospital fast enough. Yep. He said, if I would have been stubborn and went to bed like what I was thinking, he said I'd have never got out of bed. Yeah. Yeah, I'll send that out to you today so you get it by this weekend. I know yeah. with grandma, she actually hurt underneath her armpit when she had hers. Yeah, <clears throat> mine went, my pain was right here in the center, but basically between my nipples and a couple inches up. Yeah. And then it went up into my, like right out below my shoulder, but in my armpit and then all the way to my elbow. Uh, morning, Zach. And it was so bad, I couldn't hardly lift my arm. So, you know, that's yeah. all of that stuff combined. I was, I was like, I got, and then when I called 911, I was, I went out onto the front porch and called 911 and was uh, basically laying my head down on the table that's on my porch. And, uh, but the ambulance uh, station, the EMT station is only a, a mile and a quarter or so from the house. So, 
they were there within a minute or two. Nice. Because now, now we staff. We we built the new EMS oh, exactly. station in Kingman two years ago, and now they staff it. So, yeah. But I'm here. I'm not going nowhere. Yeah, it's a good thing, man. Like I said, it wasn't your time, thank God. Yeah. He told me I could live another thirty years if I changed my diet. Yeah, exactly. And your family needs you, man. Your son needs you for sure. Oh, this is killing Gregory. He's all kinds of tore up. Oh, well, he's lost it. without you, buddy. Huh? So he's lost without his buddy. Yeah. Well, Gregory goes everywhere with me. Yep. I mean, I go to the grocery store, Gregory goes. I go, I mean, I go get gas, Gregory goes. I go to the farm, Gregory goes. I mean, exactly. Gregory is with me 24-7, you know, 365. Yeah. So he don't stay with mama. He That's rather go why with I kept dad. asking when Dustin got hit by that car i kept asking him you know how's your son doing because he yeah. and his son are tight like that and autistic yeah. children change is hard for them yeah they don't like they don't like change in routine and, and exactly uh, yeah everything needs to be the same all the time so that's, but that's also what you know yesterday yesterday and the night before gregory was all over everybody's lives <laughs> Yeah, I seen him the other day. Actually, not he is, I am yeah, so I proud cool of him. I wasn't sure if that was him or not. And I thought, yeah, gotta be him. I'm so proud that he is. You guys don't understand how big of accomplishment oh, it I is do. for him yeah, to I talk do. to chat. Sure. Yeah, I, I know about autistic children. I know I I know how big of a step that is for sure. Yeah, I mean, you guys got to meet him. He don't talk. He don't talk to me and mom, careful, but he don't talk to strangers. Yeah, yeah, even correct. Tim. Catfish dog Tim. He loves catfish dog Tim. And he uh when we left CatCon, three the the two hour drive up to Ohio and the next hour while we was there setting up the Airbnb, that's all he was talking about. That he got to meet Tim. He got to meet Tim. Yeah. And then he didn't get to meet Dustin. <laughs> oh. Yep, I, I seen him, and that's why I done a double take when I seen it. I was like, "You got to be kidding? Are you?" Sure? And I'm like, "Yeah, that's a great, great, no way." I said, "Hey, Tim, yep. I'm pretty sure." But yeah, that was really cool. I was glad to see that. And, and like you said, people who aren't familiar with autism don't understand how big of a thing that is. Yeah, My, Gregory is basically Gregory functions at about an eight to ten year old level. Yeah, my ex so drove the special still needs pretty bus tight to school. Today. That's where I learned all about it. Yeah. You know, it's like when they would go in the middle of the day, they would take them on little field trips like to Kroger or, or Target or something like that, you know. Yeah. And uh, they all had to set their their wheelchairs or whatever had to be in the same place every time. You know, yeah. nobody could be like this was so-and-so spot and nobody could be in that spot. Yeah. Well, it's like yeah. at the house. Uh, if Matt goes to set in Gregory's spot, Gregory will be like, get out of my spot get out of my spot yeah and uh matthew if matthew don't get up gregory will grab him by the arm and pull him off the spot <laughs> yep but matthew is matthew's only 110 pounds and you know five foot two and gregory's five seven and 140 135 140 pounds yep. but gregory's twice as strong as matt Oh, sure, 100%. But I have two autistic sons so that live with me. I have Gregory, which everybody meets and gets to see, and then I have Matthew. Matthew's a year and a half older than Gregory, but Matthew has Asperger's. So Matthew is full functioning, mm -hmm. you know, can, he, yeah. just, he can't, he don't have the, uh, <laughs> the mindset for being able to take care of his own bills and stuff like that. Yep. So... Um, he wants to get an apartment and stuff, but for now, he just wants to stay with us. And he said he'll get an apartment later. I have a nephew with that, and this guy graduated with honors from high school. Yeah, great. Greg had and a, Matt both. He had a full ride to Purdue Engineering School. And yeah. Decided he wanted to be a machinist and went to ITT Tech. The yeah, Matt and Greg both ITT graduated. Tech looked at his transcripts and said are you sure you want to go here he had a full ride to purdue academic scholarship yeah he said nope he said i want to do something with my hands and he wanted to be a machinist yeah and the guy uh, said you do know you can get your degree at purdue and then come back here afterwards and he's like nope i don't want to do it and i yeah, you know I, I didn't get to talk to him because it's my my brother's uh yeah it was his son they adopted him but me and his 
wife, my brother passed away. Me and his wife don't get on too well, so I haven't spoke to him a lot in his life. But I would have, I would have suggested strongly to him, hey, dude, go do your four years at Purdue and then go, go get, you know, the machinist thing. Yeah. Greg and Matt both graduated with pretty much straight A's, but yeah. they were, you know, in resource classes. But Gregory could do like algebra, trigonometry, and all that stuff. But he uh, he struggles with uh, uh, reading and stuff. Yeah. But Matthew, Matthew, he's uh, really good in reading and math. Yeah. But they just Matthew with having Asperger's, it's very interesting because he has no filter. He says what he, what he thinks. Yeah. Yeah. So if we're like at Walmart and he sees a, some girl wearing, you know, hoochie pants or something, he'll be like, I see your butt. Mm. You know, your butt's yeah. hanging out. He just like, he'll just say it. Yeah. Or if he sees a pregnant woman, he's like, I know how that got in there. Was it fun? <clears throat> yeah. So, you know, needless to say, we, we don't take Matthew too many places anymore. Yeah. He, he don't like going because he don't like getting – uh yelled at by people but he can't control it so yeah. you know and the average idiot today has no clue so yeah and i and i'll tell him i'll be like matthew that's inappropriate we got we can't talk like that buddy and, yeah. he, and he's got to finish saying it whether he says it loud or under his breath he still has to finish saying it or his brain locks up but, so yeah but no i this scared the crap out of me. Oh well, yeah, well, it scared me. I know that. I mean, because I mean, y'all met my wife too, and Naomi is Naomi is also autistic, but Naomi is you know real high functioning and stuff like that. But Naomi can't drive in big towns and stuff, or you know things like that. So, hell, I'm not autistic, and I don't like to do that. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Well, Naomi also she don't know how to do like bills and stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, good thing is also got some electricity and gas, so it's not going to be too difficult. Yeah. If I if I would have died, everything else, like the, the uh, I mean, well, I do have two credit cards, so those would be taken care of and stuff, because I have death benefits on everything. <laughs> but now I need to, I think I need to go revise my uh, will and, all that kind of stuff because I haven't done nothing to it since I was in my late twenties. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I understand. That. I mean, I don't have, I don't have much, but yeah, I'm with you. Meaning that's what, yeah, a state settlement for our family is not a big deal. <laughs> you know? I mean, the only thing I really got of, of value is my house and cars. But my one, the one car nobody ever seen. I have a '63 Chevy Two Nova with a 327 and a Muncie four speed in it. Yeah, but it's sitting out at the farm and's been sitting there for twenty some years. I need to, I need that's going to be one of my projects in the next couple of years. But I got to get my Rambler finished first. I'm actually probably after mom and them are gone. I'm probably going to liquidate everything but one motorcycle. Yeah, I've got I've got seven cars and only one of them's at my house. <laughs> <laughs> All the rest of them are spread out through friends's. Oh, I got on a friend's farm. I got a couple What's in the storage up? places I need to get rid of. Two I of still them have a, going back. I still have a little uh, Honda Fifty from like 1968. Yep. That uh, I'm going to rebuild too. Of course, you know, I can't ride it. <laughs> and that's the same with the Nova. I'm going to leave uh, the Nova is worth so much money. I'm going to leave the Muncie in there, even though I never get, I'll never get to drive it. I'm just going to fix it up and sell it. Yeah. It but it's, uh, the weekend. Uh, in 2019, I, I bought a brand new Dodge Challenger, a white one. And yeah. uh, my daughter took it over. So I let her drive for the grandkids. And this past weekend, a guy was backing out in an infinity. And when he did, he backed right into the front past the corner, smashed the whole front end on the car. Oh. And she showed me pictures of his vehicle on the bumper. There was a scratch about that bump. Hmm. I'm like, how in the world? He goes, he backed out hard. <laughs> yeah. Man. He was trying to beat her getting out. He seen her coming, and he was trying to beat her getting out of the spot, I bet you. 
No, she was sitting there. She done. Oh, sat there she was just sitting there. there. Yeah, it was at a store or gas station or something. She was sitting in, yeah. in the lines. And he was in the front. And when he backed out, he backed right into her. Smashed the whole front end on that Dodge. And I'm like, oh, my God. Well, my hair is wild today. I thought I bought that car and I only got to drive it three times. <laughs> <laughs> But she's had it ever since because she's got it because she's had some grandbabies. At the time, she only had two. Now she's got three. Well, and that's the thing is, is Timothy didn't, he didn't got no kids yet. So I don't have no grandbabies yet. And after all this happened, I was like, well, man, I just about missed on out on everything. <laughs> Oh, shoot. Man, I got to be careful doing that. I doze off all the time, man. Not just during the show or anything, but I'll be sitting here and just doze off and, and I'll wake up real quick and be like, man, how long have I been asleep? That, sound, that sounds like a that sounds like a sleep deprived and sugar issue buggy. And that sounds like a guy who has a plate that's way too full to handle by himself. Yeah, he yeah. was flying when he first got on it. About 10 minutes, he was real quiet. He'd say a word. <laughs> He's sleeping. Yeah, me and my doctor talked about it the other day. He said, you know, the average person has someone helping them do what you're doing. I'm like, oh, I know it. Believe me. Well, the doctor told me that I do. He's like, you. once I told him everything I do and stuff, he's like, you do too much. He's like, you're spreading yourself out too thin. Well, Buggy, how come you don't have a nurse come in every day to help? Because they won't okay it. Oh, okay. Yeah, she comes in twice a week. Well, now it's once a week right now because he's doing real well. <laughs> Stan and, three uh, said, Dave, I think that was a side effect from Jody's catfish from Kick. Hmm. I was a judge. I did eat it. <laughs> yeah, they won't. They won't okay that. They're working on getting me paid for doing it, which would help a lot. Yeah. But I, one of my nurses at the VA told me she said they went through with her mom, and her and her sister and brother took turns doing what I do, and we're still wore out half the time. You know, no, one thing about that catfish is it was good. good this last week or two. He sleeps at night right now, which helps a whole lot. And he's been pretty lucid the last two days, three days or so. You know what I mean? He actually knows where he's at and what's going on. So that helps a lot. Well, in a way. Yeah, like like I said, this day, uh, won't, Friday, won't that's the go good out time. And change the oil in the Buick, and I'm like, Pop, we done that in the fall time. The oil's fine. Oh, I don't remember. And I like, and the other part is you're not changing oil on anything. Well, I'm gonna jump out out of here and back down. I see everybody starting to move around out in the hallway. All okay. right, brother. We'll see you. Holler, let us know when you get out. Oh, it's the food cart. All right, yeah, I'm leaving. All right. Let it, yes, Jan three. I'm with you, buddy. I, I'll be in I, chat. I guys. like humor in, in in tough situations too, buddy. I'm with you on that one. There's nothing wrong with it at all. <coughs> what are you doing today, Stan three? No fishing. Or were you on vacation or something last week? Well, he fished on the show Friday this weekend. He's yeah, working that, on his boat. Yeah, that's what I mean. He was on two or three times last week. That's why I wondered if maybe he was on vacation or something last week. Oh, you meant because he was fishing, yeah. Yeah, he was fishing. I think it was three times total, I think. Oh, rebuilding the boat today, cool. Yeah, I need, well, I don't want to start on the garage yet until I'm sure it's going to stay warm. Because I think what I'm going to do is pull the trailer and everything up, and I got a long driveway, pull everything up and make a bunch of room right there in front of the garage, and I'm just going to take everything out 
of the garage and slowly put things back in. I'll buy a bunch of tarps to cover it with. You know what I mean? I think that's the way to do it. Because I got some metal shelves, but they were in there when I moved in and they're dirty. So I need to get everything out of there, start on them shelves with the shop back, clean them all off. And I think I'm going to line them with cardboard since they were all dirty and some of them some of them are stained with oil and crap like that and i thought well i could just take you know put cardboard on them and you know duct tape or whatever to hold it down something like that and then stack stuff on it yeah or not, yeah. i got my pegboard for all my tools to go on i gotta find a place to put it up oh it's the shad and run i fish as much as i can i had time in the morning last week oh, okay i see yep the shad run equals the fish are following the shad around and you, you uh, i'm with you see i wish i had sh stuff like that up here man i got nothing but a, a river that you can wade across in most spots in a reservoir that is not known for its fishing prowess. Which if I had, <laughs> nice dude, I like that. See, you come from people like me, we would have done something exactly like that too, to make it, to, to add some, some lightness to to a, a tough situation and sometimes you need to you know i always i always use the term perspective put things in perspective and yeah, i always that, look for to get your mind off that subject on something yeah, else and i always look for the positive in, in every situation i ever come across i look for the positive <laughs> there's got to be a positive there somewhere and yep. right there's a prime example. You only got to buy one shoe now. If you could just find a store that sold one shoe. <laughs> find somebody who's got the other leg missing yeah. and send that shoe. Put you an ad on the Facebook Marketplace. Looking for someone who has only a left foot. Because I have a right foot and we need to buy shoes. We can split it 50-50. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wonder if I don't suppose they got a prosthetic for just one foot. Then I'd be at, like, well, if you got to take the foot, go ahead and take it up to about eight inches, nine inches above the foot, then I can go ahead and get a prosthetic lower. Oh, do they? That's cool. Subject change. I had 249 pound of fish yesterday. Sent all the pig. Awesome. No kidding, gig. How much they pay a pound for that? Let's do some arithmetic. Oh, staying three. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Say, Gig, how much a pound for them fish? Let's do some mathematics here. This is also an educational program, folks. We're <laughs> going to teach you arithmetic today. We're going to see if, if Gig's buying drinks tonight or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stand three, what he said, still making me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> now that, I don't care who you are, that's funny. Dollar <laughs> 75 a pound. Heck yeah. Pimping ain't easy or cheap. <clears throat> Get my cypher machine out here. 
Heck yeah, that's what a good day right there right. now. Hey, that's he said day. if you he said he'll do it if you can't use the monster rod holder to catch the fish. Hmm. Ain't that what he said? I think that's what he well, said. I mean, like, yo, Annie, I need you to prop your foot up here on this cooler for me. <laughs> so I can get an extra monster rod holder out there. <laughs> and let me know when you feel that rod holder start moving. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, think like he said, uh, they said if he used the, uh, Kevin said, as long as he's got them monster rod holders, he'd use them. <laughs> he didn't say how many you could have. He just said, you got to use them. <laughs> You're all right, Stan 3. <laughs> you know, the first time I met Stan 3 and his dad was at the first cat con I went to two couple years ago, maybe three. And, uh, they had made, I don't know, but I probably told the story before people might get tired of hearing it, but they had, they had these rod holders they'd made fishing on the bank, and I asked them about the dimensions on them. And it was like six months prior to CatCon, and uh, they made me three of them and gave them to me at CatCon. Instead of telling me the dimensions and stuff, they just made them. I'm down to one now because I've lost two of them, but it's just like my cat claws rod holders. I'm down to one. Huh. I'm, last year I made uh, I made my own monster rod holders. They turned out pretty good. Oh really? Interesting. Yeah, I had a. I made six of them, and I had like a total of less than two bucks, or a total of less than seven dollars in each one. Nice. They're not rubber coated like like theirs are. They're not the biggest round, but they still serve its purpose. But yeah, you can buy that rubber coating stuff in the can and dip them yourself. Well, the tips were the were the top of the rod sets. I rubber coated those, but the rest of them painted orange. Mm -hmm. You made rusty <laughs> rod over, <order>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I got several people seeing them. They wanted them, me to make them some. I said, but I can't make them for you. I said, I copied them off the fishing stuff for the monster rod holders. They would get me in trouble for making those rod holders and selling them. I can't do that. <laughs> I mean, I've got the, the dirty dog rod holders that I make for the bank, and that's, and I don't make those out just for the, my friends. Hey, happy Gail, what you doing? Mm -hmm. nice. You know, it's, you know, your life is getting boring when the day of the week doesn't even matter what day it is no more. Yeah. Rustic rod holders, it does, doesn't it? Come on down and buy some of these rustic rod holders. I used to make crappie rod holders for boats. And, uh, and man, I've sold them things from here to Georgia. They got to where I couldn't keep up with it, so I quit making them. <laughs> but I've sold yeah. them. Yeah. As with anything else, it gets popular. And then what was the kind of fun hobby becomes a darn... No, nah, painting them is cheaper than buying the material. The material's like tripled in price nowadays. Hopefully, when we get a, that new president, get Trump back in office, things will drop back down to normal. I can afford to buy the material again. Bad when he's buying three eighths round rod for seven ninety eight a twenty foot stick, and now it's plumb up to twelve thirteen bucks a stick. I'm like, oh, wait. <laughs> I guess I had a lot of junk. Yeah, that, you know that's the thing I missed. My house I had in Noblesville that I'd lived there for so long. I had like a two car garage that had another two car garage behind it, that, but it was just attached. There was no 
garage doors on the second garage or whatever and i had all you know i'd keep scrap and stuff back there and if i came up to something i needed and i you know a brace or whatever i'd just make one yeah you know and i miss doing stuff like that a lot i want to have my weld shop i kept every piece of metal that was cut off for something that we built or fix somebody's stuff and and I had tons of scrap now I'm down to very little because I've used so much of it. Mm -hmm. You know, Gig, I, I'm with you there. I don't think it's going to ever come back down again. No, I don't think we'll either. Been there for so long and people pays for it anyway. But the metal market. Yeah, they don't care about. They don't care about the person. You know, it's all about the profit. And I'm like, you know, at what point do you keep? reducing the size of what you're selling and yet charging more for that also till people decide say you know what i'm going back to making my own you know i yep. you know at what everything costs now it's almost cheaper to make it yourself you know food wise you know cookies and cake and yep. you know stuff like that candy well it's like if you look at the doritos uh chips they used to be thicker, you know, the chip oh, yeah. itself yep. thicker. Now, if, you, if you actually yep. look at the chip now, it's a lot thinner. Yep, that's another thing. See, that <laughs> if you're not paying attention to little things like that, you don't notice, but it makes a huge difference in their profit margin. Yep. Yeah. I noticed that the other day when I was eating, had a bag of them. I thought, I sitting there eating them. I said, I had to look at them and said, man, I remember these chips being a little bit thicker than this. And these things yep. are like on the paper thing. I'm like, Come on now. Girl Scout cookies, they, they instead of getting four rows, you get three rows now. What's that? Same on purpose. cookies, yep. And the cookies are smaller. I'll tell you one gets me and I and I hate and I feel sorry for the Girl Scouts, but I won't buy cookies no more. You get what about nine cookies and a pack of Girl Scout cookies now, something like that. And that's just like, man, I, I feel sorry for them, but I can't buy them no more. exactly stand three and in that say one ounce let's say they lowered everything one ounce doesn't sound like much but when you multiply that one ounce by a few million units sold now you're starting hey. to talk about some money hey dale j dog welcome back what did you miss not much man I flashed my boobies a little bit ago. You missed that, but I'm sure you can rewind it and find it somewhere in here. Now that he's back, J Dog, I'll put these in the mail for you today. So you'll have your bug man, y'all have them for this weekend. You bad jokes. Yeah. Hey, that one joke saying was funny. Now, that was funny about the rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you missed Stan's audition for the comedy show. He uh, he didn't make the cut for the, the night program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more than I've done. Got a 750 a stick. <laughs> That's nice. I had I used a lot of round stock and I'm following it. Used to get it cheap. But around here ain't that cheap no more. And, and the metal is like stock market. The metal always goes up or down, but it goes up high but comes down very little. So the next time it goes up, it goes up high and it comes down very little. Welcome to Legal Health Center. This is where we have professionals standing by. Buggy. Buggy tits, hell yeah. Did you have to untuck them from your pants, Buggy? Well, who said I was wearing pants? <laughs> and he never got up in front of the camera, walked up, let his dog out yet, so we don't know. <laughs> How's your phone going dead, Eric? Time for a new charger. 
<laughs> I wonder why he'd go back. And you know, I had what? Be sure and spray it around dad's chair with that stuff. Yeah, so, okay. Work. Yep, I want to get him up today and take, move all that stuff out too. I want to get him up today while he's up and about and move everything out of that chair, move the chair out and clean and disinfect everything today. Since it's cold out and I seen light snow flurries a little bit ago. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to catch my PB this weekend. I may have to run down and get another Red Bull today. Let's see. But we ain't got to shut down at eight. We ain't stepping on nobody today, are we? TMFH. The uh, MF house. I'm in the MF and house. <laughs> I'm coming down fish with him, Stan. Three once a month. Now I get to take dad to respite and I get five days to, to do stuff, which is the first time in five years or more. And I am so stoked because I needed a break. That ice machine, I've done had to dump that tray three times already. Whew, I didn't think it was ice out. Yeah, my bad part was I drink, I used so much ice, mine couldn't keep up with me. Well, I put, I got gallon Ziploc bags that while she's going to work, I store up the ice for her. And, and I about face time, all the job. <laughs> I don't even care if we catch any fish, to be honest with you. It's just fun to go down there and hang out, you know, because I haven't done anything for a while and just getting away. Yeah, ain't the uh, brothers good. of construction's going to be there, ain't they? Yeah, I think Eric and Curtis are coming down Saturday. Y'all make sure y'all get in front of Jake Dog's new boat there now and take a picture for me. Send it to me. Thank you, Gig. Yeah, and, uh, Curtis done called me out, and I was like, that's fine, but you got to sit in front of the boat. I'll be in the back. <laughs> me and my three poles will be in my three rod holders in the back left corner. <coughs> More to Terry B. You talking about j Dog's boat or yours, Stan? Terry B., hey. Yeah, man, I missed the dog pound. That the boat, that pontoon boat, the dog pound, it wasn't super fancy or anything, but it just had a good vibe about it, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, battery was dead in my pickup truck. I had to jump it. Then I had to jump the work truck battery. Then the phone said overheating. What the F? <laughs> yeah. Jade, Did you have the defroster blown? Yeah. Know, like a stupid question. I shouldn't have asked it, but if it, that can make it overheat. <laughs> Terry B., good morning, buddy. <laughs> Yep. If the day starts out like that, if anything, go home, throw a lawn chair in the back of the truck, a pole and some bait, and go sit on the bank somewhere and cast out and just sit there. And that means I'm going to be there. I could be there till next Thursday. Dave. <laughs> I'll hold you hostage till you get a 20 or bigger. Yeah. There you go. Okay, Dave. Good luck, brother. 
I hope BKG comes out good and they get they get to let you go home, man. <laughs> stand three. Looks like you're gonna be the longer. <laughs> That's what I said. Stand three. I was like, dang man, I'm gonna have to be there all week. <laughs> Which is okay by me. I don't care. Eric said it's supposed to snow there today. Keep you're, that snow. You're, that's up right, Jay Dog. My bad. I'm sorry for treating your sensitive ass so bad. I apologize. Uh, shit, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, but you won't do. <laughs> hmm. Dag now, but. Hey, morning, Curtis. Buggy's fixing to get a butt whooping this weekend. There we go. Dang, I love when the mouth overruns the ass. <laughs> you see what Jade all put in there? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Oh, cool, Terry B. Hey, I'll tell you what, man. Did Yak Shore make a good showing this weekend or what? I heard he did. Yeah, he did, man. He caught some fish now, I'm telling you. I was impressed. I'm just waiting to wake up the neighbors with salt and grinders. He's here. He came in earlier. This is the worst Steve Mosley. You don't trick me like this. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, J Dog needs a tissue. Yes. Yeah, Steve, can you please wipe J Dog's nose for us? <laughs> he needs to cry on your shoulder, buddy. Tell him it'd be all right. Somehow I have eight fishing poles now. Only seven of them got reels on them, but I don't know how this has happened. I can't wait to get my garage organized so I can make a place to hang them up on the wall and stuff. Yeah, you're. I mean, if if, if you're going to set the joke up, we got to follow through. I mean, we would lose our comedy license if we didn't. They'll pull our SAG card. <laughs> Sorry about the TV, guys, but somebody woke up, so you get to hear what I hear every day. It's awful early to start Westerns. Man, you got to watch that gun smoke now. Got to see what Matt Dillon's up to today. I know, man. I know. I actually seen Daniel Boone the other day, which I hadn't seen since I was maybe nine. Daniel Boone was a man. He was a big man. Yeah, but why never movie? He's a little short guy. <laughs> Did he actually catch them though? I heard they were from Bob's Rinner Fish. You know, I didn't see anything in the rules that said you couldn't. Well, yes, called- three, that's cool with your grandpa. I watched him when I was growing up. I feel old now. <laughs> Hey, don't ignore my comment. I missed it. Where Steve Mosley doesn't. That's a, we already did. We already busted you out for the Steve Mosley comment. Morning, Don R. How are you, buddy? What's that one old western with the rifle man? It was all black and white. Yeah, it's on there. 
Hey, down the one mom and them watch uh, me TV sometimes in the morning at eight o'clock our time on me TV. You get leave it to Beaver for an hour, which is another quality program. But I think they got Andy Griffith in the evening time. Well, let's see here. He said down further than that. But all I see is that one and the hey, don't ignore my comment. And we said that I don't see anything besides that there, buddy. Buddy. I'm looking. He oh, he said oh, go watch an old Abbott video. Oh yeah, we we already we already laughed on that one. That was before the Steve Mosley one, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we already laughed at you on that one. You should talk about your relations like that, man. Cowboys are awful fun, huh, Sandy? I'll wear a cowboy hat, Sandy, if that's what you need, honey. It's not a problem. Yeah, I would play it. alone. I'm not I'm not opposed to role play. He'll wear, he'll wear a cowboy hat and socks for you. And I I wear boots and spurs if that's what you like. Oh, dang. But you got to clean up the mess. I don't do it. Today. <laughs> I know. I got all carried away. I'm sorry. I'm not awake yet. Man, I need to go out and shoot my rifle. I got laying here sometime. Oh, he said, no, I said, Buggy's just upset. I'm going to whoop his butt in a dirt with a bike race with my Husqvarna 500. Oh. <laughs> you will do nothing but get yourself killed. On a Husky two-stroke 500, if you can kickstart it, even. I've seen them. I've seen the Husky 500s blow knees out. See how? Good morning. See how? Good morning to you. I tell J Dog like I do all them young guys when I used to go dirt bike racing. I was in my thirties and could still ride pretty fast. I forgot more trails than you'll ever see in two lifetimes. Fifty years of dirt bike riding is a long time. I don't know, I lived out Arizona. You can learn a lot of treachery. You can learn a lot of treachery in that amount of time. See how? Let me check you out. I don't think that don't look very familiar. Let me see if I've ever seen you before, bud. Morning, Roger. He said you obviously did look at my girl. Christopher. Might need to go take a peek in his garage next time. <laughs> Who's? J Dog. He said you obviously did look in my garage when you was here. No, I didn't actually, but if there's dirt bikes in there, you should have said something. We'd have been in there all day looking at stuff. I'll probably tell you things about that Husky 500 you don't even know. My dad's best friend owned the first Husky dealership in Indiana in 1969. What year is yours, and I'll tell you what color it is. I didn't know a Husky Why don't I make a dirt bike. You kidding me? That's what they start out as. Actually, they started out as a bicycle manufacturer before that, years and years and years ago. Huh. I only thought they made And then forwards. they became the most successful dirt bike manufacturer in the world through the 60s and the 70s. Hold on, Eric. I see you, buddy. And then in uh, the 80s, the original owner, company, corporation, or whatever, went out of business and Kajiba bought them. And that's when they started producing some pretty subpar bikes, even though they were still pretty decent. And then through the 90s, they actually made some pretty, uh, the 2000 or so Husky was real cool, the four-stroke, because the head on it was red. They called them the redhead bike that year. You're saying? An 87, 1987 Husky 500 would be either green or red. Oh, wait, 87. No, it's white with blue and gold trim. And Honda 250. And it, see, 87, it should have plastic by then. In 87, they should have went to the single shock by 87. 
and I'm trying to think if it was a straight up and down rear shock or if it was actually inverted a little bit. I'd have to see the swing arm to know. See the handlebar clamps, the bar clamp actually comes up and kind of back towards you at about a 40 or five degrees or something like that on that one. See, 87 would have probably, at, at the very minimum, it had a disc brake on the back. It may have disc brakes on the front by 87. It should, it should have had disc brakes by 87. My 85 Honda had disc brakes front and back, I think, or it may, yeah, yeah, front and back. Fishing door set live. Good morning. Okay, see how uh, Wednesday, Wednesday, I don't do Wednesday. Hog wagon will be on on Wednesday. I won't be on again until Friday. Just last week I did it because they were on vacation or something like that. And we're just lucky I'm here today because I totally forgot that they were going Tuesday to Thursday. <laughs> yeah, Hog was supposed to go fishing last week sometime. Did he? I doubt it. Video game fish probably. Well, Shane, hopefully you take them out when the winds ain't blowing 100 miles an hour. MJ Dog, I didn't know. Is that you on that bike? Is that the woods down from your house? If so, man, dude, I'm going to bring my bike down there and go ride. Look at you. If that's you ride, you ain't got a helmet. You're an idiot. Hey, Stan 3, get her done. You've met J Dog before, don't you? Haven't you? Hey Sandy, the Coddy just came out with a dirt bike this year. There's a motocross bike. They're starting out in Europe uh, in the GPs this year, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Antonio Caroli was part of the development team. Well, Giant you say, actually came out with one this year in the States. Dang, you guys met J Dog before. You understand, you know? He's like Cousin Eddie. You know? Chitterful. <laughs> hey, Jay Dog, is that down by your house in front of your house or something? That's awesome, Roger. If so, dude, I'm coming down this fall with my bike. We'll go riding down through there. Roger, do you know the two idiots that flipped their boat Sunday at Hoover? Ain't a Ducati. Ain't that a high dollar bike? Yeah, the road bikes are awesome. They actually made this, they make this one road bike. You know how like the swing arm holds the back wheel, right? And it comes around each side of the wheel. Well, Ducati makes their road bike is, is made after their uh, road racing bikes. And it's actually only got a swing arm on one side of the wheel. That way you can take the tire on and off real fast in pit stops. Yeah. And I'd just love to look at one to see how thick the axle is on it. That you got to figure that one axle goes straight through the wheel into that swing arm, and there's no support on that other side, right? So that axle's got to be gnarly big and made of titanium or something. I don't know. I'd like to see it. one. Uh, J Dog said yes. The Muskrat said I did not hear about it, so just he just heard about it from you, Eric. Yep, two idiots on Sunday flipped a boat over at the Red Bank Marina. Remind me, Jay Dog, I'll up. bring you a helmet. I got four or five of them. Because whoever, if that's you riding this and you ain't got a helmet on, you need some serious talking to, young man. He might knock some sense into him if he hits a tree. <laughs> hey, don't forget his elbow pads now. <laughs> <laughs> Knee pads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still think the body they should pick, stick to their lane and get to what they know. You know, but Sandy, there's a lot of money in motocross right now. There's a lot of riders in the world, and uh, okay. like I said, Triumph done it. In fact, they've, they've got a bike racing right now in the 250 class with two riders on the East Coast. 
<laughs> Roger. In fact, it's called the Ducati Desmond 450. I just happen to have a video pop up for it. Tell me they don't listen to us. Here, see if I can get a picture of it, and I'll show it to you here. <laughs> Jay Dawson, said he has a built-in helmet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. In fact, the Ducati should be racing right now. Come to think, I'd like to look up the MXGP and see if it's actually being raced right now because it started two weeks ago. I usually subscribe to it and watch the MXGP motocross races live. Half the time, they're on like Sunday morning at 4 a.m. or something like that. But yes, I would get up at Sunday at 4 a.m. and watch motocross because I had an issue. Uh, some things had to happen this week uh, that, you know, went, on, went our way. Uh, we had to get rid of a lot of things. Uh, but, um, you know, anytime that you have an opportunity to play at home in front of your home fans, uh, we really, like you said, we're, we're not just uh, excited, but really grateful that it worked out. The way mm -hmm. Hold on, I'm getting you a picture of it. Ah. Florida Gulf Coast or Oklahoma City. Rumbler and India, they are both at it. Agnab, you. Somebody's up. Somebody's charging TV. Huh? Yeah, the news came on. Yeah. Speaking of the pickup, they do have to Here you go, Sandy Toes. Here's that. The Cotty Dirt Bike. Let's see, where am I? Oh, heck now, but there we go. Yeah, give yourself full screen here, buggy. So we can see. Oh, it. yeah, that makes sense. That now, hold on. How we do that? We go here and so lay out here. Hold on, real quick. And it looks like a beast. Team Ducati, baby. Uh, Roger's supposed to be 64 degrees. That'd be a cool jersey to have, though. It says Ducati on it. We might actually turn some laps on here. Let's see. Oh, it's supposed to be pretty decent down there. I think it's supposed to be cloudy some. Oh, this Only is at the GP rain. race. Yeah, it is. In, it's not in the production. They're actually racing it now. That would have been practice at the GP this weekend. Right, pretty cool, huh? You got now you got Ducati, Triumph, Husk Barna, uh KTM. I thought Bugman's shirt said F me. <laughs> yeah, it says FMF. You know what that stands for? Not a clue. Fast MF. -er. Oh, I thought no, it, I it, said stands, it stands for Flying Machine Factory, actually. <laughs> I thought it said I had F -me. A girlfriend. I had a girlfriend, and she asked me what it stood for, and I told her that Flying MF -er one time, and I never told her that it didn't stand for that for like a year. Oh. And we'd be the dirt bike races and stuff, and she would say it. And people would look at her, and I finally told her, I said, oh, by the way, it don't stand for that. <laughs> yes, I'm honorary that way. Where am I at? Back to live. Oh, hold on. We don't need that no more, neither. 
the heck get my fat ass off the screen. There we go. I'm driving and I thought, and I really thought it said of F me. <laughs> That's what I thought it was too. <laughs> I was thinking, lean back and I seen the bottom part of the F. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, Sandy, you definitely wouldn't buy one, especially you never buy anything the first year of model. Even like Honda, Yamaha, anything, you never buy that first year. When they have a complete rebuild and make a new bike, yeah, you always wait till the second year. That yeah, way they, they work all the bugs out of it from the first year. It'd be like when Nissan came out with that full-size truck that first year. They had troubles out of that truck. <laughs> Mother, I said, I'm driving. I really thought it said F me. <laughs> yeah. I did too. Nope. Donnie Elmer started the company in 1973 in Southern California. Well, not the company, but he was racing dirt bikes, and he was a machinist, and he wanted to find an advantage, so he started working with his own exhaust to make his bike faster. So he makes this exhaust pipe, and he's beating all his buddies, and they get mad, and they want exhaust pipes too, so he makes them some, and then they go to the races, and they're beating everybody, and so then everybody wants one of these pipes, and Next thing you know, it's the year 2024, and they're the leading aftermarket dirt bike exhaust manufacturer. Still made in the USA, and the metal is actually manufactured in the USA. I'll be right back, Buggy. Let my dog out. Yeah. Buggy means dead. Hey, Gig, have you seen one of them uh, electronic outboard motors yet? I've seen seen them online i got so far as to looking at the price I was like yeah that's never gonna happen and i don't know if i'd want to be 15 miles out in the ocean with an electric motor i don't know could just be me although it would be kind of cool if you think about it, especially in a boat if you were to be taken off and you have no engine noise whatsoever that would be pretty cool it'd almost be like you're in a sailboat only you actually have a motor propelling you the more i think about it, that'd be really cool just an overdrawn control motor mm, that's nah, a little more than that dude oh, the one i seen uh, run like 65 70 mile an hour well, see, it's an overgrown trolling motor. Yep. Believe it or not, the electric dirt bikes actually turn faster lap times than the original, you know, standard gas dirt bike. But it only turned them laps for about two hours before you got to charge it again. And with the dirt bike, they, you just keep on riding with the gas motor. It's just more weight on your boat though. hey hydrogen you know what gig i know uh i seen an interview with elon musk and uh he said that you know naturally they're still manufacturing teslas and they're gonna be but you know or originally that car was an experimental right well now his next thing is to develop a hydrogen automobile I mean, I don't know how long it's going to take him, but you're going to see it happen someday. So as soon as they start making vehicles run off of water, uh, they'll be dead. That person will be dead and the plants will be go with them. Yep. But that's what they're working on. And I think Elon Musk, as far as he goes, I think he just does stuff like that now because he wants to see if he can do it. You know what I mean? I mean let's face it, I, I own a car manufacturer, I own a space company. Let's see what I want to do now. Let's try and see if we can develop a hydrogen motor and piss everybody off. And like you said, the oil industry will kill him if it's successful. But then again, he's probably only, what, the sixth guy on the list. They want to start with Trump and work their way down. You know, they want to kill Trump. Then they want to get uh, 
Tucker Carlson. They want to kill him and Julian Assange, uh, Andrew Snowden, and then Elon Musk. He's got a way to go. Well, never have to worry about them getting me because I'm not a smart man. Me neither, dude. Sometimes <laughs> ignorance is a bless, isn't it? <laughs> Mm. I wonder if I'm having battery, battery problems with all my batteries. I wonder if I'm going to have problems with my own battery. You know what I mean? Shh. Don't jinx your own karma, man. Yeah, there is. Ain't your gig. I guess you could put Kennedy on it. John F. Kennedy Jr. could be put on there. Uh, Who is Chili out there? And then uh, Jim Jordan, they want to get him. I just wish if Trump got in office, he would eliminate the FBI and the CIA or, or dramatically reduce them by about 85%. It would be nice for him to just say, hey, you don't pay taxes while I'm in office. I'd be happy there. I'm with you, Sandy Toes. Big, big dog. Big dog. The manager said he argued with the man before watching the video of him doing it. Trash man. Trash man. Trash man. Who is it? My dog's working with trash man. Uh oh. I was about to say, it's not Thursday, is it? <laughs> I was getting ready to run out and take my trash out. What are you doing? That's a miniature yeah. horse. What is it? It's a miniature horse. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that when you pulled up. Yeah. You know, my buddy I worked with, the cable company, had one of them, and he had a chihuahua. And every time the Great Dane would lay down, the chihuahua would try to hump it. It was the, I was hilarious. I wish we had cell phones back then. I would have filmed it. And then the chihuahua, you look at It'd have been funny if he hooked up and he stood, the great name stood up. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, this chihuahua was hilarious. When I first met him and I went over there, he's holding his front paw <laughs> up, right? I'm like, man, is there something wrong with his paws? He said, oh, no, he's just lazy. He said, he'll hold that one up. And after a while, he'll put it down and pick a different one up. He said, he lets one of them rest all the time. <laughs> And I didn't know was, he had two great dames, and I didn't know they were on or not because I just met him through work and we were going to play golf. And I stopped to pick him up, and he had a fenced in yard and the house set up on the hill, so I didn't know if he was there or not. So I just opened the gate and walked in with the dogs, and I'm scratching their ears and walking up there. And he come out the door freaking out, what "The hell are you doing? Well, come get you go play golf." He said, "Dude, you don't." He said, them dogs will tear you up. I said, not right now. They won't shut up. <laughs> don't don't get me as scared of them. They'll know I'm a scared. Say dog said, great, great Dane and a Chihuahua. That reminds me of Buggy and Eric when they first met. <laughs> oh, Jado, you are a sick human being, young man. <laughs> That's why I like you, though. It keeps it entertaining. Yeah, I could really use another Red Bull, but I guess I'll make a cup of coffee. What time is it anyhow? It's 8.30 already? Y'all get out of my house. Let us get this late. No, I'm kidding. I don't care if it's on or not. But I gotta go to the bathroom. I'll be back.
<laughs> See if mom wants some coffee. Oh, shoot. Hmm. Oh, bug man. <laughs> Early morning with bug. <laughs> yeah, I got to mail out a couple of things this morning when the mail lady gets there. Tell you what, that's one dog you don't want to take to the dog park because if you have to, you have to pick up his poop, you better have a trash bag. <laughs> yeah, a big one. I used to have a great thing. <laughs> I watched it and told the wife, I said, man, that thing crunched about as much as the horse does. <laughs> You're funny, dog. You need to start carrying you some dog treats with you <laughs> so you can give to them. You should do, but Tony, me and Tony, one of the old drivers. He did split, you know, so we used to buy the boxes with the milk bones. We used to put out like one month he'd buy them and then another month I'd buy them. But when he got uh, Luke Garrick's disease, he had to quit driving for us. I stopped doing it. He's no longer with the season. A real good guy too. One disease I don't wish on anybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's pretty bad. So he became. He was skin and bones. He wasn't nothing. I clocked out last um, week five minutes under full 50 hours. Good morning, Linda. Sandy said, my mother had a great day. Children the biggest one. We would have to take the, to the horse club to be weighed on the scale for the heartworm pellets. Look here in the metro area. If you've seen a few flurries at times early this morning, so across parts of the state, you may be seeing a few light flurries here or there around the shelving. Are you close to sleep again? I know I had that one great day that was gave to me, and I'm well than six foot, and that dog stood up. I mean, like. Head to head to me, I'm like, get the board of more clouds. Looks good. <laughs> well, man, so I got you all in the bathroom with me. <laughs> Red Bull is big for play out. And she would sell the dog for sort of big dog. Looks like we'll get caught up. North split, little bit slow, still coming into the north slope from the south side. Do that. Somebody has to hold that chihuahua up there to do that. Well, they built some steps. <laughs> oh, time to get up.
Mm -hmm. Well, uh, he's in the bathroom right now. He'll be rock box. But I imagine he's reading it. Job creation has a way to address multiple societal ills. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Education, education, education. These two are the only basic that eliminates the poverty. It also helps them with the mental health issues that's causing a lot of problems. And it also helps the mental health break. That is a first. <laughs> wealth of our healthy community. I ain't That's seen Greenwell's new video. Legal, check it out. See what it's about. Yeah. How much we are creating the problem. Why did you get up on the couch? Uh, yeah, I thought he was asleep. She's mine now. I saw the tomatoes food spread, the thorium tomatoes food spread at Indiana University. My wife is a geriatric psychiatrist. She works with the mental health issues. She sees hundreds <laughs> of patients every day with her other psychiatrists as well as she has one of the largest psychiatric practice in the state of Indiana. She has an 88 parent. You've seen that much sense in YouTube lately. No. Mental health issues. Do what? Jobs. How to revitalize the economy. Well, he asked if anybody watched Greenwell's new video. I said, I ain't been paying too much attention to YouTube lately. I ain't neither in the last couple days. Jobs. More jobs. 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 Jobs.
Of the body snatchers, where they put that person's head on that dog, put that dog's head on that person. <laughs> yeah, my grandpa used to love dogmen. See, this favorite one for the chocolate. Imagine a big dog with a chihuahua attitude. Oh my God. Oh, that truck a while ago yeah yeah the same guy that owns uh the toad yard owns this gas station oh. the only self-service gas station i've ever seen i haven't seen them in a long time you say full service yep well we got one one two around here I know, well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. Still got credit at one of them that I go all the time. Like when I had a world business, and I still got the credit over there. Where I could charge gas. That chihuahua was so horny, he walked around up in the air. <laughs> Big belly, that one of the If you sit still long enough, it's gonna knock you up. <laughs> 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 Uncle Lou said about like Eric then. Yeah, that's a little better. <laughs> Hold on, Muskrat. I see you, buddy. I was in the bathroom. How you doing, man? Morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning, Roger. How are you, buddy? I'm doing all right. Driving. 
Yeah, I'm getting ready to make mom some coffee. Yeah, I'm going to make me some, too. Who, who am I lying to? I'm having trouble getting going today. Because I woke up a little, well, I didn't. A little guy woke me up at like four or something. And I logged on looking for, you know, the coming up soon thing, and they had never seen it. And uh, I was like, is there not a show today? Right. Sure enough, there wasn't. I was like, okay. And I know that I've been told that, but I'm sure I just don't remember. Hmm. Uncle Lou said, guess Buggy was the great day and Eric, the ankle biter. <laughs> yep. 100%. And I was the pitcher, not the catcher. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I, I had to make a coffee. Yep, I was pitching. I wasn't catching. We'll just leave that deposit at the bank. <laughs> Only thing I catch is fish. Okay. I got the one time fishing club hat on today. Yes, sir. Because I qualify. Because I qualify. <laughs> well, Roger went poof. <laughs> Roger, you come back up, leave a message in the chat so I can tell him. You are still participating. <laughs> that also bug man pitching or catching. You're still playing baseball. Hold on, Chill. I'll get a cup so I can give you some love. He's playing with something. Oh, let's see here. Oh, he's back in the basement. He'll be back here in a minute, Roger. Yeah, they definitely like this food better than the other kind. Yep. <laughs> Just let you know, Buggy Rogers in the basement. Say what? Roger's in the basement. Oh, I thought I already let him up. He dropped down. Hold on. Yeah, he lost signal, I guess. Yeah, hold on. I got you, man. There you go. Hey, there we go. I don't know. I have no idea what happened. I don't ever have signal issues there, but it yeah, is what I it is. I always hit them buttons. I got to find a pan to make some. Oh. No, I was going to. Take the opportunity to holler at Rustic about uh, some skipjack fishing, man. I'm excited. Oh, I am too. Like I said, you drive that far, we're going to load you up. Supposed to be a pretty decent day Wednesday. I forgot to grab my rubber boots from the house. Do, you, do I need rubber boots, you think? Hey, I don't wear rubber boots. I wear my tennis shoes. Okay. I don't plan on trying to step in that strong current water. <laughs> no, I didn't figure, but I didn't know how treacherous it is down through there. But I've only been down there one time. Uh, it's not muddy. I mean, some people wear them. A lot of people wear them down there, but uh, I don't. Yeah. I got my regular hiking boots or my regular work boots. That'll be all right. Yeah, just make sure your rod's got 20 pound test line and it's a good light enough rod to where don't wear your arm out. Yeah, um, I got a couple of graphite bass rods, like Abu uh, Vengeance rods. And then I, I picked up a couple of these uh, chasing jacks rods at CatCon. Uh, Jeremy Chase, that booth over there. I don't know if you've seen those guys jerking around those two pounds, two pound of weight on them skipjack rods. Man, those things are awesome. But I didn't even see their boots. I'll check that out next time. Yeah, it's uh, Jeremy Chase is is the owner, and um, the rods are called Chasing Cats, and he came out with a skipjack rod. It's called Chasing Jacks, 
and uh, and it, I was super impressed. Really awesome rods. We went to Gunnersville last week. I was down in Alabama visiting my daughter, and we ran over to Gunnersville thinking we'd get some skipjack, but uh, it was a big fat negative. There was so much grass coming through the dam that you you couldn't even you couldn't keep a, a line out there. Huh. Every every cast was nothing but but uh, seaweed and, or that grass. Yeah. Does he have a YouTube channel? Who's that? Uh, Jeremy Chase. Uh, no. I'd like to get a hold of him about his skip that rods. Yeah, he, um, I can send you his information. Yeah, I saw I him and bought a couple, and I talked to a couple other people. I think everybody, I, Chris, Chris and Telly went and bought them. Chad went and bought them. Zach went and bought them. About everybody I ran into went and bought them. I, I, I think they're, I think they're pretty awesome. They've got plenty of backbone in them. Um, they're light, they're sensitive. I got me one while uh, I was there. I wish I'd have known he was there. I got me one when I was there. <laughs> Thank you. Already have. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. I got, I use just a, I got a Berkeley rod from Walmart, a Shakespeare rod from Walmart, like right, 28 bucks, 29 a piece. And that's what I catch get tags on. One of my favorite rods was from Academy Sports and it was only $15. And, but it was, I think it was an eight foot rod and it was pretty stout. But man, I, that's what me and Doc Lang, Doc Lang turned me on to him and it was like 15 bucks or 18 bucks at Academy. That was a really good rod. Jody said, I bought James one. He loves it. And Chad said, I'm glad you didn't rustic. I bought two more the following weekend. <laughs> what he didn't have yeah, anymore? I, I I thought he had plenty, but I don't know, man. I, they were pretty impressive. Let's see, you send me information, see if I can't hold get to one. He said Chase right. and Jackson were by by far my favorite skip deck run. Who said that? D. Oh, really? Like I said, I've got just cheap rods I use for mine. I got good reels on them, but uh, these seven footers, long as they're light enough to where well, they don't wear your arm out all day. I've seen people down there fishing, trying to catch them with their catfish rods, big catfish rods. I'm like, what in the world? Yeah, he only had two left after CatCon, and I bought them. No kidding. Well, you don't fish. Why do you need all them rod for? We don't know D's fishing. He bought them for D. They're, they've yeah. got some kind of like, um, I don't know, like chameleon finish on them. They're, they'll change color like from brown to gold to purple and blue. They, they're real, they're real sharp looking on top of being great action. I'll have to check him out. Yeah, I was going to go today, but it's cold out there. It was 35, now it's temperature dropped to 33. <laughs> Tomorrow I got therapy and Wednesday I'll meet you up there. You'll be able to get Dom up that early. I'm gonna go be I'm down gonna, there by myself. I'm gonna try to get him up that early. <laughs> Dom said it's 15 there. Woo. Say no check can't even spell skip jack. <laughs> Stop picking on my buddy Chad. Yeah, me and Dominic said we're gonna we're gonna load you up since you got the drive so far. I got a couple big old coolers. I got one hell, I think it's as big as yours, a 150 quart cooler, and yeah, I got another one. It's about 70, and I carry a small one with me. I don't know like what the access is, but I've normally like 
fill up a cooler and then take it up to the truck and dump it and then come back down. Yeah, I use a seven gallon bucket. Uh, J Dog says, So, how many skipjacks did Roger say he was bringing me? <laughs> well, we'll we'll see what how it goes. If I got plenty, I I'll hook you up. Giga Billy, I'm not even gonna read that. That's just rubbing it in. <laughs> That's just dirty. He says 78 degrees. <laughs> yeah. Cornerstone fly. 30... What's up, Matt? Yeah, we got 34 degrees here. It's not the wind ain't bad. <laughs> Yesterday we was on the river, the wind was bad and uh I think it was forties, but it felt pretty chilly. But the kids didn't care, man. We got we, we only caught one fish yesterday. We fished till about noon. Uh and she caught that fifteen pound blue cat. And that's the first fish she's ever caught in her life. She was she was tickled to death. You think that cold front could have put the bite down a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, every fish we caught this weekend, me and Zach fished on Saturday. Every fish we caught was covered in mud. I mean, clear across the top of their back. You could write your name in it. Thanks. I don't bother. But even though the river's up, like, I think our pool's still up like 12, 15 feet, something like that. We found some areas that were inside bends and slow current that uh, we was able to drag. I caught two flatheads at the same time on the same rig. Dragon. That good. Kentucky Rick. Kentucky Rick. Kentucky Rick. They were small. No, it was just a, it's a modified Santee Cooper rig. So instead of, you know, you got your float in the back and where, but I just put a dropper, you know, halfway up the line. It's a long rig. It's about six foot long rig, but I put a dropper like a, like a Kentucky rig halfway up and I caught one on one and one on the other. <laughs> I was like, what in the world's going on with this line? I, I didn't even realize I had a fish till I got them clear to the boat because they couldn't fight right. You couldn't feel it right because there was two fish fighting each other. Yeah, going opposite direction, yeah. So you never had a head shake. You never had any of that weird stuff. You're like, what is going on here? And I got them uh, up by the boat. And, uh, yeah, it was two fish. They're both small. I mean, but it was still pretty cool to catch two flatheads at the same time. Oh, yeah. Don't fly through water. Yeah, we got yeah. 50. 50. Water tip is, it went between 49.5 to 50.5 most most everywhere we went. So it was average about 50 degrees everywhere we went. Huh. We and we was fishing um we was fishing where were we fishing? Aberdeen. Aberdeen. We got a tournament there next weekend. I think Chad's even in it. But we caught seven seven or eight fish yesterday or saturday which the guy that runs the tournament fishes there all the time he only caught one fish and war pig was up fishing too he caught three fish so we felt pretty good that we caught seven fish and we don't know that area at all good morning Stuart. uh man that's what i like about catching some skipjack you get three or four on there and they go different directions oh i love that fight match two flatheads on one rig Aberdeen you was only 25 minutes away from me says j Dog. yeah I know he's I know he's just right up the road and he's probably wondering why didn't you stop by and say hi <laughs> well we we launched in Aberdeen and then we ran down, you know, down around White Oak and that are, that's where the tournament's out of next weekend. So we <laughs> ran down there. Yeah. You, the, sh the bait, the bait was tough, man. We got little tiny shad. We had three inch shad. We had like two decent shad to work with, but everything else we was catching on three inch shad. It's about like a bait shop that I spot skip that for. They gave me a, five foot casting net and i looked at it and i said for real you think i can throw that <laughs> right now <laughs> she needs chad and i said i can't throw that right now <laughs> yeah i like my favorite net's an eight footer bets super pro i like to throw an eight foot five eight smash 
I want to try to start throwing a 10 foot one inch mesh. I like to have that as well, but I ain't got mm -hmm. one yet. They're too expensive. And I had a six foot that I give possibly had a hole in it. And I told him he could have it. He's going to fix it. And I said, <laughs> I can imagine throwing a 10. I can barely keep the six foot from being a taco when it hits. They all said, I'm going to let it slide because you're bringing me a hundred skipjack. <laughs> Uh, he must be talking to you. Are you talking to you? <laughs> We're not coming up there seeing him 25 minutes before. He can hold up the boat ramp and haul it up the hill. <laughs> We're going to try to load him up. We're going to make sure he can drive that far that he's going to take home quite a bit. Then I'm going to turn around. i got to catch me about three, 400 to put my deep freeze. Yeah, I'm hoping to get some. Oh, you will. Even if I had to catch you them said, all, you will. <laughs> <laughs> you get me close to them. I I used to do okay when I get if I get around some skipjack, I can usually hang pretty good. If I can get to that one spot, that's the hot spot there. If I can get to that and you're there, well, I'll move out of the way and let you have that one. Well, that's what I'm saying. If I need to be there, whatever time you need me to be there to, to make sure you get whatever spot, I'll be there. If you tell me to be there at four in the morning, I'll be there. I got 10 nets in my shed. There's a red condo now. I goes, did you just catch over 400? Yep. And they all about gone. They're probably middle of April in before they move up in here. Yeah, I know, Stonefall. You said you wish I had that tournament later on uh next year we do we might make it a little later so you we make sure you can get it good yeah ours get ours move in pretty late they moved in early this year I guess yeah, we didn't have much of yeah not much of a winner the only problem is last year at this time you couldn't catch nothing under two pounds. It was all two, three pounders. And, uh, most of them you catch the small one or, or a mid size. All both sides, and every night you catch the large one. But the perfect ones, are, the perfect sizes, moved in. Yeah, it's snow flurrying. I just looked out a second ago, and it was flurrying real well, actually. <laughs> big, big, big or small, I like them all. Good problem. Get What's that? I'll probably out today or tomorrow. I didn't hear you. You find out today or tomorrow about what? Whoever it was that flipped their boat. It is oh. right there from the Red Bank. Red Bank Marina. Everybody hey. Hey. <laughs> Did okay. you look at those air? You look at those Airbnbs I sent you. Fish whisper, hey. Yeah, I looked at them, but I can't open them. Oh, oh, the shirt. It's a one picture. It don't. Tara said. Yeah, I'll have to send you the link instead of the. I just tried to forward them. What Jackie sent me. Um, Tara sent me one back yesterday. She said she liked a lot. I didn't even open it, but I'll send you that one, and you can take a look at it and see if you like that one. Please tell me you wasn't chasing my kitty cat. But finding one big enough for everybody and plenty of parking and everything. Jackie's really good at it. Though. She found some She found some really nice ones and she found some really good deals. I got to go out there and fix that, don't I? You'll have to wait a little bit. We're having coffee. Coffee. We're having some coffee. We got, we got to figure it out pretty quick or they'll be gone. Yep. It's coming faster than we think. Yeah, be here before you know it. Yeah. Right, condo. Yep, I bet. Then you'll get down there and it'll be gone before you know it. You know what I mean? Yep. Time yep, flies. Time flies. Time flies. Time flies. Time flies. Busy. Uh, I just wanted to hop in for a minute, say good morning. I was driving, so I didn't. I couldn't text. Well, you know uh, how it so goes for me. Voice text. <laughs> It's dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, ask Jody been, about that. <laughs> I've been in getting in the habit. I'm gonna have to stop. Oh yeah. 
All right, y'all. I'll jump back in chat and listen once I get caught up here. All right. Okay, brother. See you later, Roger. All right. All see right, you guys. Bye. Have a good one. See you later, brother. All right. You know, if those oh, zodiac are so plentiful, couldn't you cast net them? Yeah, how? I think they move too fast for that bug me. But, oh. but yeah. I was going to ask because, you know, you guys, don't, everybody and their mama goes up there and catches all of them. How do they repopulate so fast? Because each it's one of them crazy. makes about 300 or 400 babies. Yeah, but don't it take a, a, a while for the babies to grow up? Well, yeah, you're catching the ones that were born th two years ago or so. I, I, I ain't never used skip jack. I've always used shad. Yeah, well, I don't old think we have them around here. Old spot fin shad. Now, skip jack grows fast. I've sent skipjack to people and they said that they never got no bites on it because it's not native to their water. Well, hey, you think the smell and, and scent would bring them in though? Yeah. Well, that's like people using eel where they're, you know, where American, American eel ain't at. You know? Fish ain't used to eating it. It's probably like flipping crap, but you know, you don't see chickens swimming around in the water, but fish eat that. I can't complain though. I like I like eating chicken breast. Yep. So I'm more of a dark meat man myself. And uh, I like breast. Breast is good. Buggy. <laughs> Especially barbecued. Skips on our section of Ohio spawned. Oh, second time. I guess pretty good skips in June. But ice fish in June, so I can sketch fish are not made for the water. I don't know. I've seen people use them up in Hoover, but I don't know how good they work up there. I don't know. I don't know if they're in Hoover. Little guy, we're gonna put a little ice in It's kind of hot today. Yes, it is. Put a little ice in there to cool it down because you can't drink it right now, buddy. Yeah, stonefly late mid mid June till I think first uh, of all, that's when the small ones move in up here. As long as the fish can smell that scent, I think I think you'll catch skipjack. You skipjack anywhere to catch fish. That's what I thought. They didn't think they were. I'm gonna do me some eel fishing this summer and get the boat out. Go to this one spot. Okay. Uh, no, Tennessee, uh, you're only allowed a hundred. You're allowed five in uh, Kentucky, and I have to buy the. Uh, in order for me to sell them to bait shops, I gotta. I buy my commercial license. Yep. Roger, so does my uh, some of my bait shops like the two pound plus ones too. Yep, that's fresh water. Come on, go out. Hold on, I gotta go out here and untangle your thing. Hold on a second. Stewart, uh, skipjack or saltwater fish, but they move up into uh, fresh water to spawn. And then when they built the dams, they just got trapped behind the dams and the river systems. Oh. 
Yeah. Yep. You can if you're gonna do it full time. I don't do it full time. Here, hold on. I just do it until my license run out, then I stop. Yes, you want to see the There you go. Yep, I'll make sure I get my commercial license that way uh they come check my deep freeze. I've got, I can have as many as I want. I didn't have my commercial license. I couldn't sell the bait shops, and I can only have as many as allowed. There is snow on my deck. That sucks really bad. Roger, where do you live at? You can sell some. What is that? Snow on the deck. Snow on the deck. Oh, that's no yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, he, he still does. I took a lot of his business down here. I think he still sells to those at Crowsville. Okay, move that over there. Move this over here. Ah. He said he stopped. Okay. The coffee is cool enough to drink now. Heck yeah. I just usually fish and catch skip jacks and as many as I can for it. My back starts killing me, then usually I stop and I come home. Go to McDonald's, get something to eat, and go home. That sounds like a fine way to spend a day. Yep. So they got them all the way down in Alabama. Oh, yeah. They, there's or a, should I say we got them all the way up here from down that way? Yeah, up in Alabama, man, they, they catch up things there year round right there. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> they got a good skipjack fishery up there. I know people here, They when they can't get them here, they drive all the way there to get some. Uh, I'm really? not. How do they know where to get them at? Hold on. Oh, there, you're still there. All right. Yeah, how do they know where to go? I guess they just talk to someone down there or whatever. Or do they get them at Dan's just like we do here? Good morning, Chad. They had to come up to the Ohio and get to the Tennessee River. Tennessee River dumps into the Ohio, and the Ohio dumps into Mississippi. I didn't know that. Another Tennessee dumped into the Ohio. Yeah, I didn't either. I thought the Tennessee dumped into the Mississippi. I would have thought that too, but evidently not. I'll have to pull up Google Maps on my computer later and check it out. What? Hey, all the rivers start from the Great Ohio River, you know. That's right. There are no rivers greater than the Ohio River. And they changed the Tennessee regulations because people were coming there and taking so many. Oh, yeah, especially for a pickwick, man. It's a killer spot for a skipjack. <laughs> I go over there and I can catch 100 of them in 20 minutes. Then I'm done. Three hour drive, 40 minutes, 30 minutes fishing and go home. <laughs> Where is that at? Pete Week, Tennessee. Huh. Hey, 
Mark's oh, coffee. Shoot, man, I got to get busy after this coffee. I've got to pick wake at three o'clock in the morning one time. Caught my hundred fish limit. I was back on the road by five o'clock, <laughs> driving home in the dark. You ready to come in? Okay. Didn't figure you'd last Amazon. Russ, the best we can do is two fish a minute, and that's not a long cast. Yeah, I watched you catch some fish. You pulling them out very, very, very quickly. I don't think I've ever done two fish a minute unless I was catching four or five at a time. <laughs> Uh, well, them things flap around. Sometimes it's hard to get the hook out of them. I never had much luck with, with him in the dark. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hmm. I can't believe I got up so early and now it's what nine o'clock. Oh, it's after nine now, isn't it? Because beaver's over. Yeah, sure is. Yep, I think we're gonna shut her down, guys. Shut her down, shut her down, shut her down. Ten seconds till the gate drops. Uh, I sure appreciate everybody coming up. It's 9.16 in God's time there, Uncle Lou. That would be 9.16 God's time. I'm going to shut her down here, fellas. All right. Uncle Lou, you know what to do. Oh, my belly's hurts today for some reason which really really sucks <clears throat> anyway it was a pleasure having everyone come in and hang out today i hope everybody enjoyed it as much as i did not really but i'm sure it was better than sitting around twiddling our thumbs i reckon what now and i'll see you guys friday goodbye <laughs>